Jesus had wives and children. The wedding in Cana, that was his wedding. Uma Johnson's a brilliant brother. Mm. The school thing is good, but the thing with the school thing is this, yeah? What language are you going to teach the children? Hitler was a part of the Third Reich. Germany actually lost the war, but the Third Reich won the war. Where did Yanun get this knowledge from? Do you know about the jinn? And if so, how do they relate to Anu and the Anunnaki? Yeah, the jinns are a species of these extraterrestrials. Like I said, there's agreeable and disagreeable one. When you say Yanun, again, in the Quran, he's mentioned by different names throughout all the scriptures. Yanun, that you're talking about. In, in Arabic, they will say, O oh, light. Ya, O, oh, Anun. But really, um, his name in the Quran is referred to as Al Qadir, the green one. Um, he's known as Melchizedek, he's known as Tahuti. He's known as the angel Michael or Mikael. Um, he's the archangel, but he's an incarnation, meaning that the same being incarnates from time to time and generation to generation. As I said, he's the recorder of um, most of the knowledge on the planet. And like I said, he's also a linguist and he's able to speak all the languages of the scriptures and, ha and has actually translated every scripture from its original um, or as close as possible from the originals that you'll ever have. So he's translated the Torah, he's translated the Injil, he's translated the Psalms, he's translated, um, well, where, basically every scripture you can think of. Book of the Dead coming forth by yeah, day. The, the um, Book of the Dead, or what people call the Book of the Dead, is yeah, the coming forth by Psalms, day. Psalms, yeah. Injil, Torah. Not only that, it's, mm. he's put himself to the, to the test, like, like we say, he was like, ask me any question. And he put the information out into the world by writing books so people can check it out and then ask him questions. But you know what? I, I need to make this clear, yeah? Islam is a beautiful religion for the Muslims, yeah? Christianity is a beautiful religion, those who practice it properly, for the Christians. Um, Judaism is beautiful for, for the Jews. All of them have the fake ones and the, the real ones. We are not telling anybody not to follow that. It's a beautiful thing for them. But as Sabaeans, we have our own culture, our own scriptures, our own way of life, which is Wu Sabat. And that's what we are living. Um, we're not telling anybody to not live their way of life, but Wu Sabat predates all of them. And it goes back and connects us back to our ancestors and we have a divine connection with them and it works for us. Um, and anyone can be a part of Wu Sabat. We have our own culture, our own language, because to, be, to have a culture, you must have your own language, uh, your own tones, your own vibrations and frequency. You know? So it's important that we clear that up because we're not here to challenge you know, Christianity, Islam or Judaism. Like, if it works mm. for you and that's your way of life and that's what you choose to do, Fine, but it's not the way for African people. Mm, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, it's not, it can't our, be way. Your, it's not it, our way. Yeah, it can't be yours by natural nature. Yeah. You know what I mean? A polar pear can't be in Sahara Desert because it's not its natural environment. It has to be in a cold environment. So the religions, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, are the three frogs, which are draconian. They came by word of draconians. We've got our own science that works for us. Wusabat, that works for us. That's right. Islam, Judaism, Christianity works for those. It's not for us. You can yeah. fool ourselves all day long, pretending we want to be Christians or Muslims or Jews, but you're not that by natural nature. What nature chose for you? Mm. Nature, you have your own science by natural nature. And that's what we've got to recognise. And it ties into the slavery as well, mm. right? Like, like the slave and the slave master cannot worship the same oh, God, yes, it. if you really think about it, because <laughs> mm. the slave master is going to be praying to his God to say, help me keep these slaves in slavery. Mm. And the slave is going to be like praying to God saying, please let me escape from this madness. And like, if your prayers are not being answered, because when we go back to the, the slavery that African, not every African, because another thing, because we saw, I saw in the, um, in the comments that people confuse and make out, it's like, we're not saying that everyone that's in Africa now um, or in America was in Africa, as in 
the continental drift, even before the continental drift, right, land underwater is still connected mm. from all the continents, right? When you go underwater, the land is still connected. But when the continental drift took place, there were people that were living on the side of America already. And there were people that were living in what we call in Africa today. Mm. And when you deal with the, um, the Olmecs, which is on you know, the American side, they literally walked over. And um, how do you know this? Because where something has separated, if you go and do ge geology and take samples on one side and look at the trees that grow on that side, the soil, and you do the same on that side, you're going to find the same things on both sides. Mm. Yeah. So people that want to say the continental drift didn't take place, go and research Pangaea or Pangaea. So the point I'm making is that there were two slave trades, one in the um, 1400s mm. and one in the 1600s. And yes, they were um, what people call, they'd like to say slavery was going on in Africa before, but it was not anything like what the continental mm. or the Arab slave, again, we say slave trade, it wasn't a trade, it was a kidnapping, because mm. a trade is when you exchange money and get something. So what we're basically saying is like, if African people were abducted or kidnapped by the Europeans, by the by the Greeks, Red Arabs. the Red Arabs, um, how are you gonna worship their gods mm. and their religion? It doesn't make sense. Black people love it, um, hate everything about slavery, except for Christianity, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't make any sense because this was beaten into you and now your DNA is is programmed to the point where you're afraid of the slave master. So we want to connect back to our ancestors, back to Africa, back to what works for us. And everyone else, when they pray to their gods, it works for them. Because you look on the planet and who's, who's getting help? And why are you not getting help? Because black people, so-called black people, because mm. we're not even black, um, because we go back to that state of supreme balancement, which is not a colour, it's a dark energy, dark matter. So when we say black, we're not referring to the colour, yeah? Mm. Um, when you go back to why don't we get any help? Why are we the ones that are being abused and, you know, have people say we're on the lowest, um, what would you call it? Like uh, lowest, on, the lecture, uh, on the scale of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, of all the races, yeah. Exactly. Mm. So it's not religion and these gods and Allah and whatever we're calling, it's not working for us. And since we've started to reconnect back to our ancestors, we see the changes, mm, you know, definitely. we're seeing the changes. So you have to connect back to what vibrates with you by DNA. Another point I must make, when you look at the um, covenants, right? these are contracts that were made by these extraterrestrials with certain bloodlines on the planet, yeah? Going back to like Abraham, going back to Noah, going back to um, Eve, right? And this is why in the Bible it says, um, the the serpent and the woman will be would be um, at uh, war well, yeah, with yeah. each other, and that's dealing with the fact that the covenant in religion. People think that by going into these religions, they're automatically going to be saved because they're tying in into the covenant. But no, it's on the DNA level. If you weren't part of the original contract or the agreement or covenant that was made with these extraterrestrials, you are not safe. Mm. Yeah, so it's a bit of a an illusion for people to think that joining these religions, they're going, they're going to be saved. They're not. They're not going to be saved because it's about who was the contract drawn between. I hope I haven't lost. I hope I haven't lost you, but we can expound. So when these extraterrestrials are coming back and they're taking people for food, um, if you're on the menu, they will take you. Look at the word menu, M-E-N-U. So you got to know <laughs> how to get off the menu. Yeah. Yeah, because you're going to just be food. Just like you go Sainsbury's, you go to Tesco's or wherever, and you buy chicken and you freeze it. Watch, um, there's, a, there's a show called Colony and um, Salvation on Netflix. These, these uh, movies kind of give you a, a breakdown of... Um, of what we're calling the food for the gods doctrine. Even there's a, a Twilight sh um, show 
one as well called um, To Serve Man. And this being comes down with a book, gives it to the humans, tells the human race, put all your weapons down, no more war and all that. And then they, um, they, they start to decipher this book and they realise that the title of it is To Serve Man. But they're mm. thinking like, these beings are here to serve man, you're like, look after man. But once, when they break it actually down, it's like an actual book on how to serve man, like a cookbook. The book of Leviticus <laughs> is a cookbook. Yeah. If you look at the way they dress the the priests, mm. um, they're wearing aprons and all that. And you start looking at what they're doing. Read the whole of Leviticus, right? You see clearly that this is not a joke. What we're talking about here is real. And there's a woman that does um, spirit cooking, they call it. So mm. if you guys can do some research, Jay-Z, Asha, all their men are part of that mm. spirit cooking. So they use like blood, and also they'll, they'll create like the human fetus in, in like a cake and like have people eating it and stuff like that. So yeah, if you check out spirit cooking, that's still with that. What happens when you die? First of all, we don't die mm. because energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be trapped or transformed. However, we know what the question is referring to because this physical body, as we we, we call it, it's bacteria, is from the dust of the ground, not in the sense of um, God took ground and formed man, and we're going to explain that, because everything is a cycle, things recycle, nature rec recycles. So the reason the, the, the dust thing comes in is because when a woman is pregnant, most women that are pregnant, they have problems with their sinus, right? They have sinus problems and that's because the dust of the ground they breathe it in and the being that is within their stomach at that time as i explained the last time is that the sperm travels up the the um the spinal column to the cerebellum to get ignited through the pineal gland to receive the energy that becomes what people call the soul when that soul is being grown in the mother's stomach as the goddess creator when she's breathing in dust the dust of the ground actually then becomes congealed and it forms the limbs and all of that with that pure energy or ethereum being that is being grown in her stomach and then you come out obviously as a baby with you know with limbs and so forth as as a baby but when you translate the different parts of you because you're made up of your physical body you have a spiritual body you have a plasmatic body you have a mental body you have an etheric body these are all parts of you but they exist in different vibrations or frequencies known as they have mutation they all have mutational rates yeah so you're connected to all of them at the same time but they vibrate at different frequencies and so when you're you, and the reason you're on this lower plane is to master the lower planes, which is the physical, the spiritual, the mental and the soul or the soul and the mental. And there's others as well. Right. So when you pass on, it's like your elements decompose and go back to the to the vibration where they came from and the real you. So your soul being will travel on to the to the plane of soul, your mental being. It's connected to the mental realm. So a simple way of describing this is that you're like a computer connected to a network and you're connected to that network by something called the etheric cord. Just like computers on a network here are connected by the ethernet cord. And once you're connected, you can access the different realms that you have access to. And the more spiritual you are or the higher you vibrate you can connect to the to the higher realms so people who are more spiritual and they visit these abodes like in your what people call sleep or dream state they will travel to these different dimensions and different realms so it all depends on what you're calling you because the different parts of you um like what what well, you call deaf, but it's not really deaf. It's just really transmuting or translating. And if you don't make the grade, you can come back and 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 keep doing the cycle until you make the grade to not come back. So I hope that's answered the question of um of death because we we don't really die. Right, yeah, like got twenty four cycles up to twenty four thousand cycles. Yeah.
So this is why we say our ancestors are still alive and we can connect with them and commun you know, speak with them, communicate with them, and they can help you from the other side or, or the different realms. But you're also tapped into them because ether is connected to ether, mental is connected to mental, physical is connected to physical, and you're dealing with sound and vibration and frequencies as well. That's why the tones are very important. So our language is very important, the FAC, because the F is the resonant frequency of the planet. The A is the frequency of the body and the C is the frequency of the cosmos. So you're connected to all of them at the same time. And so death for us, even in ancient times, like the Egyptians used to do something called um, open, mouth, open mouth. mouth ceremony, where they would channel their energy or their soul mm. towards Orion constellation, where they're from, or the Sirius constellation. So it's about understanding energy. The reason we're on this planet is really to master energy and how to manipulate it, how to transform it, um, and ultimately you're an energy being. So you can um, go back to being an ethereal or an etheric being, which is a pure energy being. But even in religion, they teach you that there's, a, there's an afterlife, but it's like they don't explain the method of getting there, mm. the, science, the scientific or the spiritual aspect of it. And they turn it into gardens and milk and honey and maidens and virgins right, and all that, that you yeah. can get right here. Yeah. You don't have to go to heaven <laughs> to get gardens and milk and honey and... Black-eyed maidens. Ma yeah, yeah. Ma you can get all that here. So this, this God is, that's saying all of that, it's again, these physical gods mm. that are talking, walking, and they like, you know, gardens, they like women, they like milk, they, yeah. But a supreme being on that level doesn't have any need for like physical or material mm. things like that, or emotions. Why have we been taught to fear death? What is death? De death basically is just a, a transformation into another state of existence. You just really, you just really transform into another state of existence. But it's religion. That's mm. that. That's that's the key. Like fear, 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 burn. Like you know, the fire, the fire, the fire um, game or the fire card. That's what I try and draw on, man. But yeah, this fear thing. As a master teacher said, we only fear what we don't know. Mm. Once we know, we no longer fear. Yeah, what is it? False, um, is it false illusion appearing real? The, the, there's some acronym for fear. But, but that's a good question because when you're a child, you don't fear anything. It's the conditioning and the society and the religion that starts to make you afraid. Do you know why? Because they teach you that if you're good, you're going to go to heaven. If you're bad, you're going to go and burn in hell forever. So people are afraid to die because you can't be good all the time. That's the actual fact. Like, it's religion that teaches you to be good all the time. And, you know, this whole concept of turn the other cheek. Nobody can be good all the time. Nobody can be bad all the time. So it's a balance of trying to be like, do your best and... You know what I mean? So when they teach you about you're going to get burnt, it's because you feel like you're a sinner. And remember, I touched on the word sin, which goes back to nana sin. Because what it is, is if you lean more to that side of your nature, you get to, you're made to feel guilty. Like, oh, there's no hope for you. So what happens is sometimes when people do something or make a mistake or they feel they've done something wrong, guilt sets in. And instead of going, you know what, I made a mistake, I can get up, I can fix up, I can be all right. They're like, oh, well, I've sinned anyway, so I might as well carry on. And then they just go deeper and deeper into sinning to the point where it's like, well, I'm doomed anyway, I'm doomed, so I might as well just carry on. But no, that's just the religious concept. There's no fire burning anywhere in the middle of the planet because people have traveled from the north to the south and gone through the planet, journeyed to the center of the earth, and there's no hell burning like that. The concept comes from the burning that takes place within you because it's called desires. Like you're, you're, you have desires that you need to burn out. When you're trying to live a righteous life, you might be like, you know what? I need to stop drinking. I need to stop smoking. I need to stop doing these things that are not good for me. And you struggle and have that burning within you until you actually are able to burn out that desire. And that's the burning. So you actually create hell for yourself. 
by the things that you do. And why would God have a place to judge you when he can stop you making mistakes? This is why we keep coming back to this God concept. Like you judge yourself every day by the things you do, you know, like nothing gets done straight away. Like, for example, if you're smoking cigarettes and you, you know that it says on the packet, smoking kills, yeah? You're not going to die straight away, obviously. But if you keep smoking for 10, 20, 15 years, eventually, when, if, not everybody gets, you know what I mean, cancer or whatever, but like if you did get cancer because you were smoking, you have no one to blame but yourself because you, you knew it was going to happen by the actions you were taking. That's just one example. So, you know, this whole concept of hell and burning forever, that's a wicked extraterrestrial being that wants to scare you to control you. Yeah, it's not a loving God, man. Yeah. <laughs> what happens to the soul after death? Depending on what um, one has done on the planet will determine on where one goes or what level one elevates to. Mm -hmm. If you was too attached to the earth, you'd have to burn out your earthly desires before elevating to other realms or other planes of um, existence. Yeah, remember, you always have to bring it back to energy. It's just your, you know, you're, you're transforming into a, another state to exist on a different vibration and frequency. How can your creator be alien to you? If you create something or if something comes from you, it can't possibly be alien to you. <laughs> no, but the thing is, we, we haven't said it's alien to yeah. us because we're connected by DNA. Mm. So, yeah, they, we, we didn't say that. They're not alien to us. That's why we're saying what is alien to you is when you're calling on someone or something else that doesn't resonate with you. Like, if I'm calling on my ancestors, they tie in with me, so I'm connected to them, so they're not alien to me. But if I'm gonna call on someone or something else that's not connected to me, they're actually alien to me. You see what I mean? Like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, like, why am I calling on mm. a tone and a vibration of something that I don't know and it doesn't exist to me and I can't even prove that it ever existed, so, and we can even go into that if you want. If the aliens made us, then who made the aliens? It's the same principle. It, like, we create, we have children, and the children can have children. And you can then take those children and create hybrids by taking their DNA and, you know, you can do IVF and all of this. So that's a good question because let's go back to the food for the gods because you had draconians, right? Draconians are a species, um, and they were eating beings called the Pleiadians right? And the Pleiadians wanted to be saved, just like, like we people that eat meat or chickens. If the chickens were like, look, stop eating us. We're going to give you a substitute, yeah? So they told the, play, um, they told the Draconians that they're going to create a food source for them. And then they created a hybrid um, for them to eat instead of them. Now, what happened is you have other extraterrestrials who then create or took what was alive and created hybrid. So what people are calling the greys today, they were originally like, um, they, were, they were like satellites created to go and scout planets. Like when extraterrestrials were coming, if they didn't know if they can survive on a planet, they will create these um, extra biological entities called EBEs and send them out. Just like when NASA's going to the moon or going somewhere now, they will, they will have a, a, a probe to go and check, can we breathe on this planet? So they will send these beings here. And then what was happening is some of the reptilians were abducting them and creating hybrids. Then these hybrids and these greys, some of them, they don't have any emotions or feelings. So they were now abducting like cows and cutting them up, doing experiments, trying to figure out if they can get like a soul or emotions because some of them, they don't even eat food. That's why when you see them, they're just like a little slit in the mouth with the big eyes. They actually like absorb energy and some of them can sit like in, in, in vats to absorb energy. So what we're saying, this whole thing about extraterrestrials, there's so many different species. And so um, when you say who created them, Different extraterrestrials from different places created their, like you said the last time, I mean, the DNA of these, these extraterrestrials are creating the people on the planet. And then they just create more people and then hybrids. And 
So yeah, it's it's aliens can create other aliens because they like they have sex. This is why I mentioned last time that the Nephilims in Genesis six coming down six four, mm. they were having sex with the women, which were the Pataites that were evolving, and then they had sex with them to create new beings. At that time on the planet, um, you had the Pataites were like five. The women were four foot five feet and the men were five feet four. And so there were not people that were tall. So when these giants came and mixed with them, produced children, they weren't allowed to do this, but they just, they came here anyway. Like they broke the immigration laws because a lot of extraterrestrials were coming here. As you were saying, some were coming to shop, some were coming for vacation, some coming for food. And when they had the children, that's when they knew that they had violated that that command of them not being able to come here and mix with, you know what I mean, the, um, the, the, the species that were evolving. This is why now you have people on the planet with different heights, because before that, there weren't tall beings which came from these Nephilims or these um, giants, as they call it. Will the aliens ever return? They're already here. Yeah. You're an alien. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we keep trying to tell everyone. You, you just want to... You, you, I mean, you've got the ones underground that are waiting to service and then the ones that are coming down as well. But no, to be more a bit serious, yeah, yeah they, they are coming back. They've been coming back. Mm. Like I mentioned about, you know, they came in 2003 mm -hmm. um, and they took people from Nome and Alaska. And crafts come and go all the time. So, yeah, they, they come and go. Um, and people talk about Nibiru coming back. Um, the rapture, which I mentioned before, it's a raptor. It's like these aliens come in to take people for food, which has happened already. Ask them about the story in the Bible which talks about the world ending, Jesus' return to Earth and Judgment Day. Let them talk more African spirituality and our culture. There's no way in the Bible that talks about the end of the world. Um, what people do is they, they mistranslate things. It's talking about the ending of a time, yeah, a cycle. Um, this is what we're saying about the, the, what we call the uh, uh, Aquarian age or the sun cycle. So um, certain beings were allotted the Adamites because the story in the Bible about Adam is about the gravitation of a group of beings called the Adamites, which was 6,000 years ago. Prior to that, there were other gravitations um, like the Flugorods of 8,400 years ago. So the planet, as I said the last time, the planet has been destroyed in certain parts over and over and over again. There was a meteorite shower of 17,250,000 years ago, and there was another one 2,250,000 years ago. Every time these meteorite showers hit, it changes things and some people don't make it. So the, 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 the change that's happening now is that dimensional shift, is that new sun cycle, and not everyone's gonna survive it. So um, the Bible doesn't talk about, so Book of Revelation talks about the rapture and those 144,000 and people that are going to be saved. But this, a lot of the things that people think are going to happen have already happened. Mm. Because as I said, these books are plagiarized from books that have already taken place. So in Nome, Alaska, um, in 2000, um, 2003, mm. there's a movie actually called uh, The Fourth, Fourth Kind, kind that yeah. goes into this, that talks about, because in Nome, uh, Alaska, it's like six months of the year, it's in darkness, um, and the other six months is, you know, in, in, in daylight. So these extraterrestrials came and they come and they're abducting people for food. And in that movie, it, this is what it's talking about. The movie, it's not even a movie, it's a documentary mm. movie because some of the footage is actually real footage and then they've actually like, um, you know, got actors to fill in the gaps. But so this is taking place. Um, and yeah, we've never, no one really says the whole world is gonna end. Um, and yeah, in the past, sometimes those who knew what to do, like the last time, the people that survived were the, the Watusis, the, um, the Hindus and, um, who was the other tribes? Obviously us, mm. um, the Nagarus. Um, so then when when like the dust cloud was cleared during that whole Genesis period that we spoke about with um, with Enki 
doing the terraforming and clearing the dust cloud, people came back out. So every time a destruction, um, like the Noah flood, again, that's not the whole world that was flooded. That was just a particular part of the planet. So this is happening now. And um, not everyone's going to be destroyed. But the way you will survive is to raise your consciousness and your vibration and make the dimensional shift. And that's what Wu Sabat is about. The culture of Wu Sabat provides you with that knowledge to help you raise your vibration so you can make it. I mean, in the, in the um, Holy Tablets at the back of the page, it talks about the seven funders, where it talks about the year ending um, 2030. Mm. As we know it, the world will end as we know it. Not the planet being destroyed, but this society, this system. And you can see it crashing, you know, it's, 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 cr it's crumbling, man. And the funny thing, when we say the world, that's a really good point, because um, when someone says the world, they might be just talking about their house. Mm. They might be talking about Croydon or Brixton. They might be talking about London. Mm. They might be talking about UK. They might be talking about one continent. They might be talking about the planet. They might be talking about, you know, the gal galaxies and the cosmos. So when people say the world, you have to really define what you mean by the world, because the world, your certain people's world is going to end, de depending on what you're defining as your world. And if you're defining your world as the system that the matrix that you're in, yeah, that's coming to an end. And so if you're purely dependent on the matrix and you're not like getting in tune with nature, you know, getting in tune with higher frequencies and vibration, then yeah, your world will end if there's no jobs, no food. You know, you saw what happened with COVID, how everybody was going crazy. So it depends on what you're calling the world or your world. Our world is going to be here. We're, we're rebuilding, we're, you know what I mean? Like just um, embracing this new era called the sun cycle. But unfortunately for some people that can't take the new energy that's coming to the planet, they, they're not going to be able to, to survive the shift. Remember they were talking about back in the days, the Babylon will fall. Mm. So this is it. This is the fall of the Babylon or the new Babylon. Yeah, and again, when people say, because Bible and like <laughs> religious texts is funny because we have to clear it up. Mm. Like, they're different um, empires mm. that have been destroyed many times, like the, the Roman Empire, the Greek, Greek Empire, and they say old Babylon was destroyed and then new Babylon will be destroyed. So if you go to like Revelations again, which is talking about the end times, um, Revelation 18 to, you know, you can read three, four, it talks about come out of her, of her, my people, so that you will not partake of their iniquities or their destruction, you know? So uh, a lot of people are trying to go off grid, avoid being caught up in the draconian matrix system where people are gonna get chipped and, but that's already been going on because you've got um, things like, uh, the, um, what's it called, the central um, CBDC, central bank digital, um, system that's coming in, which is the banking system, yeah? Um, where, you know, they're bringing in what they call a cashless society. A lot of people are already carrying mobile phones or smartphones that you use to pay for things and all of that. So a lot of things are changing. AI is coming over now. A lot of people don't know that AI is actually being, being controlled by extraterrestrials. It's extraterrestrials that actually gave us AI. And they, they, their thing is to actually wipe out humanity because they're looking at humanity and seeing that we're poisoning the water, you know what I mean, killing off and, and eating the animals. We don't really show love and respect to, to Mother Nature and they just want to wipe us out. And as you were saying about the Georgia Stones, they're trying to reduce the population, you know, from what used to be six, seven billion and people are saying it's nearly eight billion now to like 500 million. Uh, and, you know, people are talking about certain people like Bill Gates and certain people that are, you know what I mean, helping with that agenda. So if you think about reducing the population from 8 billion to 500 million, that's a lot of people that have got to go. So this is a, it is a serious thing. Um, but, yeah, you've got to decide and find yourself to be with a community or with people or working... Uh, in a way to avoid this. And a lot of people are speaking out against, you know what I mean, the um, 
powers that be in you know, the Matrix and so forth. Would they say Jesus was anti-religion? And are we still controlled by the Roman system or government? Yes, mm. Jesus was anti-religion because he was brought up in Egypt. And what he learned when he came back, this is why he was turning tables over in the temples because he was arguing with the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin yeah. mm. and all that because now they had differences in doctrine where mm. he was trying to explain to them that well, this what you're lot are teaching is wrong. And he was saying, you know, him, me and God are two different people. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a son of God, just like you are. Do you know what I mean? But they were pushing the Roman and... Yeah, it's still being used today because the 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 code of Hammurabi, yeah, is what we spoke about before, mm. what we talked about as the five Ps, yeah, um, penal system, politics, politics, psychology, philosophy, polytheism, and philosophy. Yeah, so that comes from the code of Hammurabi, which is still being used today by the system, and it's a draconian system as well, where they're basically trying to control everyone and everything and know what your movements are, what you do. Um, but yeah, that, that's right, it's still being used today. Will the world end? I thought we covered that. Yeah, we covered that one. No, the world... simple question. The world is not going to end, but... <laughs> the world's going to end as you know it. <laughs> well, not, For not some really, people, yeah, the world's yeah. going to end, yeah. Because yeah. cause, um, it all depends on what you're calling the world. Like I said, mm. if you're in a place where it's going to be destroyed and flooded, and that's your world, then that's it. Because tsunamis and certain, you know what I mean, things are happening and, yeah, people are getting wiped out. No more McDonald's, no more KFC. <laughs> <laughs> Did Enlil and Enki harvest enough gold and just leave a race of created people on Earth to figure it out? If so, who told the story of the sky gods Enki and Enlil? Um, like, they were actually trying to find gold because their planet was they would like what we call the ozone layer was depleting and they gold is um uh, the material of gold you can actually make it so thin is that it can go as thin as paper and what they wanted to do is take the gold and create a shield to protect their planet from being destroyed by the rays of the sun they didn't actually know that gold was on this planet, but when that accident took place with Nibiru that bumped him to meld it, then they actually discovered that there was gold here. And if you read in Genesis 2, I think, mm. um, it says the gold of that land, Havilaite, was good gold. Now, this is the key now, right? Gold takes millions of years to form. So that in itself tells you that the planet was here for millions of years because if you know about gold, there's like different carat gold. And and so um, Enki stayed because what it is, the, the crafts were taking the gold and taking it up to Nibiru. And because their two brothers were at war, what ended up happening, even before that, um, you had Anu, who's their father, and his brother called Alalu. They had a war and um, Alalu ran away because they were going to sentence him. And he came to, to, um, to the earth. But Enki, as I said, was terraforming the earth and he was in South America and amassing a lot of gold and stuff like that. So they did take the gold, but then the rest of the gold that was left here, because if you notice right now, there's no more really gold in the world because um, wherever there was gold, the powers that be, as in like the governments, they always try to, wherever there's wars and fighting is because of the minerals or the, the oil or the gold, which obviously they, they, they're trying to um, amass. Um, and then they took gold, which was worth something, and turned that into a monetary system, which is the fiat system, which is just based on paper and is now worthless. So yeah, he, they did take the gold, but they didn't just like, take the gold and leave because they had offspring here on the planet and a lot of us are that offspring and they're saying they're coming back some of them are coming back to pick up their children every culture they they keep records and recordings um in the scriptures there are many records that are kept by these extraterrestrials um like our ancestors the Natharu, they keep what we call me stones 
crystals that record the information on the planet. And Tahuti, um, who is known by many names, he wrote like the Emerald Tablets, yeah? He is um, the being that wrote most of the information or recorded the information on this planet. And some of those tablets were stolen or shared with the Anunnaki. Um, one of the tablets is known as the Tablets of Destiny. And this is why when I was explaining that the biblical stories, they come out of these tablets, like the Gilgamesh epics, the Enuma Elish, the Atrahasis. The, the, the the, there's so many, there's, there's so many mm. Sumerian tablets and they found them. So the ancient Egyptians, they kept records and a lot of the hieroglyphics that are written on the wall, um, this was recording. Even like on the walls, like the, the Seti, I don't know if you know about Seti Temple, right? They were in Abu Simbel. They had a ca carvings on the walls that tell the story of things that took place, how the gravitation took place, for example. This is why they chopped it up and moved it because the way the rotation of the planet, at a certain point, the sun would shine on, on, you know, on those walls that were telling the story. So when you look at ancient Egypt and look at the writings, this is why our master teacher, partner Bab Yanun, Dr. Malachi is York. He's a linguist that speaks over 19 languages and he's been able to translate. He's not the only one because Zachariah Snitchin was also translating some of the Anunnaki tablets. You've got people like Bill Carson, as I mentioned before. He um, claims to be able to read some of the stories. So most of the things that we're talking about were recorded on ancient tablets and passed down from generation to generation. And a lot of these tablets are now available. The Book of Enoch, there are many books that are not in the Bible. You know, the Bible today was composed of, what, 66 books mm. um, that the Nicaea Council came together to select which books to put in the Bible. And there's many books that are left out, like, you know, the Book of Wars, the, the Book of Generations, the um, Book of Jubilee. But, yeah, the Book of Nathan. Enoch. Mm. Um, there's many, many books that talk about these things, but because most people are only given a King James version, mm. which is which is just one translation of many, they don't get the full story. So you'd have to read other other books that were left out. Another one that like people don't know, Jesus. Jesus had wives and children, um, but the way they teach you, if you don't know, you won't see it. Like the wedding in Cana, that was his wedding. Because if you look at, think of, read the story properly. Um, why, why was he the person they're coming to ask about wine, um, et cetera? There's so much we can go into, but I'm just trying to say that if you don't read the scriptures in the original language and from the original um, tablets, you, you get lost. Like the Enuma Lish be begins with, when up on high, this is what I'm saying about when Enki was on high and he was terraforming the planet. But then Genesis picks that up as if it's the beginning, but it's not. It's just a recreation or a starting over again after that that crash or that that meteorite shower, depending on what it is that causes the destruction. And then they have to start again and rebuild. Yeah, so I don't know if that answers the person's question, but let's keep going. Are the Anunnaki capable of flying? Because I notice in all pictures they have wings. Yeah. Mm. And so were we at one stage. Like I said, we evolved. Because when you look at, um, if you were to do that, you see that your hair used to have like wings, yeah. wings and um, they just kind of like shed and f fell off. And if you look at aer aerodynamics of your face as well, like the way we're designed, we are not designed to go that way against the wind. We were kind of like that mm. originally, yeah. So. Um, also, if you look at your hands, look, most people don't realise it. When you do that, you see the gaps in between? If you just imagine how webs were, we used to have scales and webs like that, but it's just that they've also come off. You can see the little bits are still left there, like at the bottom part, yeah. Even on the church buildings, you see like the gargoyles and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's, that's showing you past life. And they can shapeshift. Mm. They're different types of extraterrestrials that some, some don't have to fly, they can just shapeshift and teleport. Did the extraterrestrials seed create life in Africa first and then take the DNA from that creation to create other races all over the Earth? 
Yeah, so life originally originated in Africa. This is why with the, um, you know, the scientists, they're now proving that. Um, but what also happened is it was also simultaneous, meaning that whilst Africa was first, other extraterrestrials came and they resided and went somewhere else, like in India, in Bali. They, they, they came and they were like, after obviously the original was the, the Africans, but then other extraterrestrials came and they went to separate places and they were doing their own thing, creating other beings. And so at one point it would look like, do you know what I mean? Like, this is why I said that when they started to do the research with the Human Genome Project, it was like, we don't all come from the same strand because now they can see that there were different strands at different times uh, and they're not related. Yeah. RH, RH negative, RH positive. So yeah. that's showing you the different um, blood types as well. Yeah. So before the intervention of aliens to, with the Africans, every, every um, blood type was positive. And then when they mixed in, you started to get the RH negative. Until this day, you can go and check people's DNA and they're tied back to the negatives or the RH negative is actually extraterrestrial DNA. What is the importance of blood types? What is the difference between RH negative and RH positive? I heard RH negative comes from an extraterrestrial lineage and not from this world. That's correct, mm. yeah. And, and how you know when you start doing blood tests on all the power structures in the world, the people that are in those high places, when you start to look at the power structure, yeah, the people right at the top are like your your Bilderbergers, your Rothschilds, and the people that, Rockefellers, these are the people that run the world, and then it goes down to the 500 most richest people, and then it goes down to, and they control the music industry, they control most of what you see, hear, taste, and, and that's through programming. Basically, we're, we're here to like perfect ourselves, get ourselves into that um, state of su supremeness, like the higher self, getting to, to the higher self, basically. So we're here to correct ourselves, get ourselves into that godly state or righteous state that we're supposed to be in. Um, it's not an illusion in that sense. We need to clarify that because, like I said, you have different parts of you, yeah? So... The illusion part is where we're dealing with the physical. This is what I was saying about the light creating the chaos because your other counterparts, um, they, they, so they're trying to get away from being trapped here. Like Earth is like a prison where you're here to, to um, overcome, learn, and kind of like master certain things, as I was saying, so that your energy can transmute and go to the higher realms so you don't have to come back here. So this is the illusion, but... The other side is the real one. So when you're sleeping and dreaming, you think that's a fake world, but that's the real world. And then when you wake up and come back here, this is the fake one. So yeah, the illusion is in the matrix and the physical, not the other realms. Why they keep throwing up Masonic hand signs? I, I don't know what Masonic hand signs they're talking about. If the, the person talking, I don't even yeah, know. If they, they know. must be Mason or something. But if they know anything about me, Masonic, <laughs> like what is a Mason, first of all, right? Because mm. again, we have to, yeah, let's touch on that. Yeah. There's such misconception about Mason, yeah? The word Mason means builder, right? That's where it originates from, the people that used to make bricks to build. The first Mason is Nimrod, which we talked about, yeah? The, his father, the son of Kush. And he was the person that founded what people are calling um, Suma, yeah, in Mesopotamia. So building, when you really look at building, building is how, you, how things come about. Like when we talk about atoms, yeah? Atoms are the building blocks of life. So the people and the scientists that understand and know about building know that how things come about is to build. Now, you then have, this is why they built the pyramids, for example. They use supreme mathematics to build the pyramids because they had to measure and line things up with, as we said, the star constellation of Orion. And then they had mysteries and people came to be taught and they were initiated. That's why everyone in the scriptures, Moses was what? Born in Egypt, raised in Egypt. Jesus, when Herod was killing all the babies that were being born because he was afraid of this new king, Mary and Joseph were 
they told they were told to take the, the baby to Egypt to go and hide. This is another thing. Why would God, yeah? <laughs> Someone's coming to kill your son. The best thing you can do is tell him, take him and go and hide yeah. in Egypt until Herod dies. That doesn't even make sense because he should be able to just wipe out Herod or like change Herod's mind. But, you know, I'm going to move on from that. So, and another thing is if, if Jesus wasn't black, how can he go to Egypt and hide amongst black people if he was white? Because that would be just obvious. It's imagine, it's like me trying to hide amongst a bunch of white people. David know? Beckham been trying to hide in in Nigeria. That ain't gonna work, man. <laughs> but, but anyway, the, the, yeah, the point is everyone went to Egypt. These were the builders, these are the scientists. And so what happened is the people that were taught in Egypt became what people are calling the Illuminati. This is where all of this is coming from. Because when you look at the, the dollar bill and you see all the symbols on there deal with the pyramid, the eye that's on top of the pyramid, and the Illuminati are those of the amber light. Remember I was saying about which side do you take? You have the green light and you have the amber light. So you have masonry, which is dealing with people that were builders that built structures like the Tower of Babel and the pyramids and they had great civilizations. And then you had people who were taught, the Europeans that came into Egypt and they learned, um, like we say, they learned alchemy, which is chemistry. Yeah, the, the ability to transform metals and things like from different metals to others, like make gold and things like that. And they were taught, um, like I said, Socrates, Plato, aristocrat, all of these people, they came, they learned some science. We gave them three degrees, which are referred to as the lesser degrees. They took that information, came back to Europe and formed masonry, which deals with the other side where they, they're now adding sacrifices. And, you know, because they were now, as my brother mentioned, they were serving this God called Nana, right? This is where you get the owl in the Bahamian Grove and they they serve um, virgins to this to this being. They try to appease them with the blood sacrifices and all of that stuff. This is why people throw up the Masonic signs and all the music industry. You see what's happening to P. Diddy at the moment. He's catching hell because these people have industries that you swear allegiance to serve these disagreeable extraterrestrials who deal with rituals you know, blood sacrifices, et cetera, et cetera. So people are now confusing the original Masonic in terms of the ancient Egyptian order of Nimrod and those types of beings with your bones and what are they call? Um, skull and bones. Skull and bones, mm. like, you know, like the presidents, like Bush and all that, like they're doing all these, yeah, they're running the world through what they call Illuminati, which is basically the illuminated ones or those who were supposed to be like enlightened, mm. the enlightened ones, which ties all the way back to, as we were saying, the witches with Hitler and all of that. So there's a big difference between true masonry and the false masonry. Like there's a difference between true Christianity and the false one, difference between true Islam and the false one, the difference between true Judaism and the false one. But all in all, they all come back from the roots in, in Africa, from our way of life, which is Wusabat. The real Egyptians and the false ones as well, because you know you've got people there saying, oh, I'm, I'm Egyptian and I'm Egyptian, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like... Walk like an Egyptian yeah. and all that, like making it into a joke. And... You, you would be classified as the modern day Egyptian, but not the ancient ones. Mm. That's important, yeah, because all the languages are modern Arabic, modern yeah. this, modern that. But they tell you that not one word of God's words should change. Because mm. if God is perfect and he's right, why do you need to renew it? Why do you need to remix it? Why do you need to have different versions of the message that he gave from the beginning, mm. which should remain the same? Because he's right and exact all the time. You can't be God and make mm. mistakes. Mm. What's the name of the movement they represent? Well, we're known as the United Sabians or the United Sabians Worldwide. Um, we have different locations, but the official website is unitedsabiansworldwide.com. So you can find all the stores, all the locations around the world from the contact us, contact us page on that website. Who is Dr. Malachi Z. York and what is his mission purpose? The reform, he's the reformer, master teacher. He's here to like 
basically, our story gets renewed every 25,000 years. So he's here to renew our story. We've been lied to for 6,000 years about who and what we are. So he's here to correct or set the record straight. That's why he's come with so many books, dealing with like, so many different topics, who we are, religion and science, stuff like that. So, yeah, he's here to, like, basically get us back on the right path. He's actually spoke. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. He's actually spoken about in every, like I said, every of the scriptures anyway, mm. um, that, you know, every religion says, when the truth comes, falsehood will perish. But a lot of them didn't expect it to come in the form that it did. And so what it is, is that he's here, he's known by many titles, as I said, Michael, which is translated as who dares um, to be like El. Um, he, you know, he's the warring angel. He's the, you know, the, the, um, the son of righteousness, meaning he's bringing justice to the planet. Um, with him coming means a lot of change. It means like, yeah, the raising of consciousness. Um, so yeah, his job is to really awake, awaken people up to the truth. Ask them if Dr. Malachi York is still locked up in Georgia for molesting children. And what exactly was the situation with that? Okay, number one, he's not locked up for molesting children. And this is important because people go by hearsay. They don't really do their research because you can actually, there's something called PESA, which is the American court system where you can log on online and read the transcripts of the case and see the charges. And the whole thing that's been thrown out there is to make people think about him in a certain way because people know that when you mention that term, emotions get in place. But you should really go and look at the charges. He wasn't charged with that at all. And the case has been going and is still ongoing for over 20 years now. And he will be exonerated because a lot of evidence has come out to prove that he's not the person that did some of the things that he's been accused for. It's actually other people. But he was initially trying to save those people, hoping that they will come clean. But yeah, um, he's not charged with that. And obviously people know of who this being is in terms of the works and the books and the stuff that he's going against and basically turning over. As we said, him being here means a lot of falseness and a lot of things have to go. So they're always going to be negative people that come after him. Like, name me one leader that has come to this planet for the upliftment of humanity, including your boy Jesus, mm. Muhammad, Gandhi, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, especially of the Negroid race, yeah. that has not been attacked, character assassinated, mm -hmm. and if possible, killed. You know, because anytime anybody teaches things that go against the systems that be, they want to persecute you for righteousness sake. So I would say to whoever's asking that question, like really do your research and act, do your research and learn, learn about the case before, like, cause so you're not asking a question that is actually valid is cause he's not charged with that. If you want to know, he was charged with ra racketeering or RICO, which is uh, a law that they put in place to deal with criminal, organized criminal organizations, which was really for the mafia, mafia back, them, in, yeah. back in the day. So it's racketeering, they, that's one. And then the last one is they say that he was transporting minors across state boundaries with the intent of sexual solicitation or something like that, which doesn't make sense because if you know about American law, the state law is sep separate from federal law. You can't be charged on one state for something you're intending on doing, which you can't be charged for intentions, yeah? And what people don't realize, they will say that if they know about the case, because I can go into the case, yeah? Before the indictment or before, like, his full trial was actually taken place, there were things that people were talking about, but when it actually came to the trial, they were dropped. But some people still hold on to that, but they don't know that, okay, check out the actual case and what he was charged with, read the transcripts. Remember, they, they actually locked the transcript. They were sealed 
from people in the public to be able to see and actually like look at it for themselves. They didn't put cameras in the court. It was a kangaroo court. So they actually really set this up by utilizing, um, you know, certain people in the tribe that were being paid by the FBI to, to do what they do to all our leaders, which is use COINTEL Pro to bring down our leaders. So yeah, he's gonna be free. He's gonna be, um, you know, he's gonna be free. Yeah, check. people need to do some research on COINTEL Pro. That was something that was started by J. Edgar Hoover. So that was like to, to stop the, the rise of the Black Messiah because they feared the black race coming together. Mm. That was their biggest fear and still is their biggest fear. They still want us to act like them, like Negroes, dead. So the, the last thing they wanted was for us to come together and unite. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're fighting against till today. Like, justice has to be done. Um, because, like, I mean, imagine, yeah, he never had any major crimes before, but he's in the most secure prison on the planet. planet, yeah. He was sentenced to 135 years. No one <laughs> has ever been sentenced, even people like, you know what I mean? Like, the, bomb, bomb, man, yeah, the bomb buildings, buildings and, and murder you people I mean? and all that. They've never been given that type of 135 years. And then in lockdown for 23 hours a day, uh, on the ground as well, for, for an elder, do you know what I mean? So the injustice is real and, um, it actually is painful to know that people on the planet that don't do their own like research and check things out just go by hearsay. But that's what the media does. The media machine is there to kind of like character assassinate you and judge you, you know, by the public and by social media nowadays instead of actually looking at the facts. I mean, the last thing they wanted was this information coming out. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was their biggest nut, but it's too late. Information's already out. What is the name of the planet the master teacher says our twin is on? Oh, Clarendon. Or Clarion, yeah. Cla I said Clarion. Clarion. <laughs> Clarion. I'm thinking of, yeah. Clarion is the name of the planet. Billy Carson been telling you all this for years. Yeah, that, that's why I mentioned him as well, because I saw that comment and I'm like, like I said, Billy, Billy the goat, yeah? The like, goat uh, of Mendez. <laughs> no, I'm putting out there, right? The word Billy deals with... As I said, Billy, look at everyone who's ever had the name Billy, yeah? As I said, Billy Graham, yeah. Billy, there's another Billy. Um, as I said, Bible, the old bill, the dollar bill. When you start looking at the word bill, like I said, yeah, the reason I'm mentioning that is because your title is important. Like, your name represents something. And if you're not about truth, yeah, because like you said, he doesn't mention Dr. Malachi Z. York, who was teaching about Anunnaki way before. And when you look at who you're, how you dress, um, you're not representing a culture. Um, I know he's down with Gaia, the channel, and because I've seen videos of him getting awards. I'm saying if you're telling the truth and you're real, and he, he translates and misinterprets a lot of the Anunnaki stories because I've seen some of his TikTok videos. And I'm not trying to put him down, but I'm saying like, stay in your lane. Like really stay in your lane. Like if you're doing things for money and all of that, that's all cool. But like, how do you not mention Dr. York? Mm. The same I would say to 19 Keys. How do you not mention Dr. York? Um, who else? Uh, anyone. Omar, Omar. Omar Johnson's a brilliant brother. Mm. Um, but as I said, he's a psychologist and the school thing is good, but the thing with the school thing is this, yeah? What language are you going to teach the children? Because if they're still going to learn English mm. and we say that's <laughs> the devil's language, um, yeah, you know, things like skills and all of that is great, but where are you taking people? What's their final destination? Because you have to teach them their culture to be able to break free completely from the system, and I can keep going with anyone who's stepping up to say they're about teaching the truth, you have to be all right all the way. You, there's no right way to do wrong things. So I'm saying these brothers, they need to work, come home, let's all work together. Everyone's got a piece of the puzzle, but be the best at what you're good at doing 
and let other people who are more qualified to do other things, you know. So, um, yeah, I just really, I'm, t I'm talking to Minister Louis Farrakhan, I'm talking to, um, I'm trying to think who else is out there. We've mentioned Polite, we've mentioned, um, we just want to, like, stop faking there. Yeah, it, they, they got to start recognising who the man, the man of the hour is, like, like, these guys are going on, like, Malachi don't exist. It's just like, come on, man. Mm. Or if they want to try, they will come with Take, a negative and yeah. all of that. But we, you know, we will address anything and everything. Who are these brothers? How did the American ideology of New Abeans get to Europe? Where can I see more of these brothers? Well, basically, when you're talking about Luapu, the master teacher made sure that, said that all four corners of the world were here and know who and what he is. So th this information has been, he's been treated since 1962, came out publicly in 1970. So Nuwap has been spreading like a wildfire. And it's, it's information that one can do their own research. That's why it's, um, it's spreading, because it's based on actual facts. So truth, truth always prevails. So that's why it's spreading. Yeah, uh, it's not an ideology, you know, like people say ideology, but it's a way of life. It's a culture. And as I gave you the United Sabians Worldwide.com website, we're all over the place. We're in Jamaica, we're in Trinidad, we're in Africa, we're all parts of America, um, Ghana, Nigeria. So we in the UK are based in Croydon in, um, in a shop called Nashat 101 Church Street. So if you want to link up with us, you can just come down to the store or, you know, check out the links in the comments. Ask them about the ET among us and the, the ones that control the planet, plus the ones that keep us in war between ourselves so that we do not evolve to type to civilization. Yeah, so like we were saying, most of the American governments and not just America, but the, the governments of the world, a lot of them are aware of extraterrestrials and they're in contact with them because when, even in the movies, when they show you when extraterrestrials, when extraterrestrials come here, they're like, take me to your leader because mm. they want to deal with a man or the person that's making decisions. So um, you have a lot of like the greys and certain entities that were in control of the planet, but now a lot of them have left, um, which we refer to as the, the overlords. So the Pleiadians were the ones that were, um, like George Washington and certain people were in contact with. But since the year 2000, when their 6,000 years came to an end, and we're now going into what we're talking about as the sun cycle, their time is up. And so a lot of the extraterrestrials have abandoned them and they're still trying to appease them with blood sacrifices and killings and wars and all the stuff that's going on right now on the planet. So, yeah, they're still extraterrestrials, but they rule by way of the RH negative blood types. That's why I was saying before that if you look at the people that are in power, they're all related. You know, all the presidents of America are related by blood and they try to keep the covenant within them because obviously they feel like they're going to be, to be saved because the covenant was made with those original blood types so the quickest way for you to grasp what we've been talking you know my brother and i we've been talking a lot of information we've put a little book together a little in size but heavy in weight yeah so the reason we've done it that way is so that you can carry it in your pocket and you can digest it easily but even better than that we've put a course together based on the book where you can sign up online and you can log in anytime. All the links are going to be in the description um, and all the links to help us because we want to actually be doing more content for you. So if you subscribe to our channel, if you support us, we can keep the content coming. Um, we're also going to be giving away prizes to every time we reach like 20,000 subscribers. Um, we're going to give out good, good presents. Our course um, is good because you can also make money from it. Meaning if you want to put a course on the platform, you can. Like if you're good at something, you want to teach that, you can put that course on there and you can get paid from your content. You get 80% of, you know what I mean, whatever the course price is. Um, yeah, so we want to keep doing this. Um, anything you want to add to that? Stay in tuned. Yeah. Come check the shop out. Check the, the, inform um, the books, the masters is written. Yeah, just do your research. And we do classes mm. every week for free. 
where you can, like, even with the course, you can ask us questions live. We have an FAQ thing as well, and we're going to keep updating it as well. So, you know, it's a really good way of us um, staying in tune with you and constantly updating it. And um, yeah, just connect with us. Spread right. the word, spread the word, <laughs> families, friends. Yeah, just spread but we, the word. We, we're not, yeah, we, we've been appreciating the love that we're getting yeah. from the comments. People are really like, you know, they, they, they're they tuning into this and we can't thank you, OSM. OSM Vision, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're also giving prizes for you subscribing to OSM. We're giving you a discount. So, you know what I mean? You're going to get half price if you, if you subscribe to OSM. Um, because you know what I mean, we have to we have to all help each other. And yeah, yeah they're doing a fantastic That's job. That's what it's about. Yeah, so we've got to keep bigging them up. Rise up, OSM. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good to be back. Thanks for having us back. Yeah, it seems like there was a bit of a buzz from our last video and we see lots of comments and questions and you know, we're just happy to come back and address those questions. Um we wanna thank everyone for the love and the positive comments. You know, there's a few negatives, but, you know, it was like a small, tiny percentage and you can't always have it all good, you know. So we're sharing love to even the, the negative comments. Yeah, but we can address everything today. If God is a spirit, then how can he become jealous? Wouldn't you have to be in the flesh to have the feeling of jealousy? Yeah, that's what we're saying. We're saying, like, it doesn't make sense for God to be jealous because if you created everything and everyone... How can you be jealous of your own creation? Mm. Like, and they say he can just out. Mm. Like, that's why I didn't get this whole devil thing. Like, either you're saying God and the devil have equal power, or you're saying the devil's got more power than God, mm. or you're saying God's got more power than the devil. Like, which one is it? Because if God created the devil and he can wipe the devil out by just saying, be gone, mm then it doesn't make sense that the devil still exists till today. What would be the purpose of creating the devil? And the reason is because you're dealing with these extraterrestrials that, like I said, when it's good, people give them the glory. When mm. it's bad, yeah. they blame the devil. Yep. It's like, if you didn't have one, there would be no need for the other, mm. literally. So we, we ask those questions to make people realize that their concept of God it's, the reason they're confused is because they're not seeing them as extraterrestrials. And we're going to keep drumming this home because before people used to say, oh, you know why? Another thing as well, we didn't mention the word alien, right? We yeah. used the word extraterrestrial. <laughs> but we saw how it went mad, in it, with the alien thing, that yeah? Was good still, yeah? Well, that was good because the reason why the word alien is a buzzword is because the movies, Star Trek, Star Wars, and all of this, they make it an alien. But an alien, they make it into something for you to be afraid of, mm. right? Because the aliens are coming to take over. So the first thing is, let's kill them. The Independence Day, <laughs> all these movies, they talk about aliens and they make them look as grotesque as possible. So um, if even if you look at the word alien, the first part is Al, yeah? And Al is referring to L, which is, and Lil and Enki, because in the scriptures, any any word that has way at the end, like Yahweh, um, are all aligned with Enki. And any word that has L at the end of it, like Gabriel, like, um, give me some Mikael. other words, Mikael, all of these are aligned to that side because you've got two brothers fighting, yeah? So when you look at Arabic and Hebrew, they're exactly the same language, but two dialects. So Try and follow me with this, right? So if you start on this side with Arabic, you're going to have A. And on this side, you're going to have E. On this side, you're going to have A-L, Al. On this side, you're going to have E-L. On this side, you're going to have Allah. On this side, you're going to have Elo. And as I said the last time, and somebody tried to say, that's not what it means. On this side, you're going to have Allahumma. Mm. On this side, you're going to have Elohim. And I can keep going and show you, like, like you say, as I said before, Isa, Yeshua. Um, Adam, um, At Adam really comes from Atum, yeah. and and we we mentioned that. Oh, yeah, that's another thing because I said about Amun and Atum. They witnessed the creation of God in ancient Egypt. These are triad gods, right? So they are part of the order of Re. This is where you get the three sons or the three positions of the sun. You have Atum, Atun, and Amun. 
and then you have the the part which is hidden or the under part which is known as nun or anun right this is the water this is why we say ya nun because you come from the waters to come up where they say this is the sun rising and then the sun goes to the center or the zenith or the middle point and then it goes down which they say it's descending but we know the sun doesn't come up or down it's because the planet is rotating and again, I know this this earth, flat earth people are gonna <laughs> but but how do you see day, what they call day and night, yeah? And they say most people make the mistake and say there's 24 hours in a day. There can't be 24 hours in a day. Because which part is day? Because the, there's a half. So the day part is gonna be 12 hours. And what they call the night part is gonna be 12 hours. And you can only see day turning from night from day to night or night to day when you're flying on a plane, yeah? Because I've been on a plane flying from here to America and I've come from <laughs> light and cross over and go into darkness. I've personally mm. seen this and many people have as well. So that's so what I'm saying, like, for that to happen, you have to be able to travel between two different time zones, yeah? So. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope kind of like that helps in terms of what, what we're saying that. Um, but it, it's also kind of like admitting that there are other gods, other extraterrestrials. Yeah, some that's power, why he says it. Some yeah. power. Yeah. Who wrote the original manuscripts of the Torah? That's a funny question. There is no original. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the thing we keep trying to express to people that um, no religion today has an original scripture. Um, because even if you study the history, they were destroyed. Um, and we've already said that they plagiarized from the Sumerian texts. So the Bible is really from the Enuma Elish, the Gilgamesh epics, the Atrahasis, there are many, many tablets. Um, the Quran, they would tell you that Uthman, you know, um, destroyed and burnt the original Quran. And then people had to memorize it or try to memorize it and then try and put it back together. Because even when it was being revealed, it was on, you know, bones and mm, leaves, stuff leaves like animals, and stuff skins. like that. Yeah. So the language of the Quran, the Arabic today has changed because there's vowels now, which the original classic Arabic didn't have, um, which was the, the original language of the Quran was the Quraysh, the dialect. And what people don't realize is there are different scripts and different types of Arabic. And people will say, do you speak Arabic when they're referring to the Quran? But the Quran's Arabic is different from, you know, different people that speak Arabic. It's a different dialect, you know. So um, the original Quran didn't have, you know, Tamabuta and Taj, you know, all these, these, these vowels that got added and it changes the word. So it's not original. So, yeah, the original, what they call the original manuscript was passed down um, from from family to family because the rightful successor was supposed to be Ali, yeah? Um, and, you know, he was chased out. The family, they chased him out. Um, and so they passed that from generation to generation and they hid it. And it ended up with the Mahdi of Sudan, the, the real Mahdi, because um, they always fake, like there's a fake Muhammad, the Muslim Mahdi, Ibn Hanifa, he's a fake one to the original one. So it's a long story, but basically the original Quran was passed down and the master teacher, Pana Babianun or Dr. Malachi Z. York, his family ended up having the original Quran. That's why he was able to translate without biasness, you know, word for word and put it out for everyone to, to see because he's a linguist. And that's, this is the other thing with people who, there's a lot of people out there that profess and they've popped up and you know they want to teach um, but when you start to look at people that are teaching the first thing you have to do is say okay look at them from head to toe like are they representing the culture that they're talking about look at their name in terms of the title um, I'll use this as an example we love we love everyone who's doing the works but some of our brothers as family we have to kind of put them in check like for example if you took somebody like Bill Carson the name Billy ties into Billy the goat, you know, the, the, the goat of Mendez. You've got Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. You've got um, the Holy Bill or the Holy yeah. Bible, yeah. which is by Bill, if you re listen to the phonetics. 
Um, Balfamet. Yeah, <laughs> Balfamet. And, and even if you go down to the police, they're called what? The old bill. bill yeah. So when you start to break people's down, um, the titles and the names and what they look at, and then, m most importantly, look at who's behind them. Like, who's supporting them? Who's giving them money? Who's like... And when we go through a lot of people, you find out that they actually... Um, faking the funk to a certain degree. You know, I mean, I can keep going and name certain people and not, not really to attack them or anything, but you got to, you know, this is another saying people say, yeah, they say, um, seeing is believing, yeah? <laughs> no, seeing is knowing, mm. hearing is believing. Because when you see something, that's why I say use your eyes. And if, if possible, you your, use your third eye as well. Like, let your eyes be the judgment, like, break down the, the person like they because people wear suits and ties or they will come with do you know what i mean and a patch of african fabric <laughs> and, and do you know what i mean like they're not really living it mm. they're not really representing the culture that they're claiming they you know what i mean they're representing so break everyone down i can give you a few more examples like the brother 19 keys he has a, a show where he says high level conversations like you can't be on this planet dealing with high level conversations and don't know about who's about all about the master teacher partner Babi Anun. So some people will not really speak about him. The word, the number 19 is yep. a, a number that he's known as the 19th elder. And the Quran's magical number is number 19. Like the Torah is number seven. So there are certain things that when people take on, um, you have to be able to question them, you know, and most of these people, who else is out there? Um, Bobby Hemmett. Yeah, Bobby Hemmett. Um, the thing about Bobby Hemmett, they're all good. They have information, but Bobby Hemmett, um, and they take a, they take digs at, at, at us as the master teacher as well. Um, Young Pharaoh. Yeah. Um, Bobby Hemmett, as I said, these people, they will talk Egyptology and talk it, but the master teacher has actually built the actual culture, like the pyramids and... Egypt of the West, you know, so some people just talk, but they don't produce actual physical evidence. Uh, who else? You said Young Pharaoh. Young Pharaoh, young Pharaoh yeah. is a smart, smart brother, but again, um, they don't. I don't see them really representing the culture. They've they they've got knowledge. Um, Umar Johnson. Mm. Um, he's a, he's a psychologist. Yeah, good thing he's doing with the school, but he's not a linguist. Um, so it's good to stay in, in your lane. When you look at philosophy, mm. that's one of the five P's, which is the code of Hammurabi, yeah? Which is what? Politics, penal system, philosophy, philosophy polytheism. Penal system. I think I said that. Um, what's the last one? Pantheism. Yeah. Right, so all of these, they, they deal with philosophies like you just talk and talk and go around in circles and you don't really have to prove anything. Um, yeah, so basically we're saying when it comes to Wusabat, when it comes to our culture and when it comes to the master teacher, Panda Bab Yanun, um, it's real. It's as real as it's going to get. Um, and we want to work together with, with people if you're really, really about it. Um, who else is out there? I think, uh, okay, another thing then you look at, like I said, who's behind these people. And a lot of the times it ends up back with some form of religion. So even when you look at like the Nation of Islam, the Nation of Islam are under Louis Farrakhan, who was under what? Master, um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. Who was under WD for Muhammad. Exactly. Mm. And the, these people tie back to religion because they said, Asiatic, they were taking us towards the Asiatic black man when we are not Asiatic, we are African. So, um, Umar Johnson again, he goes back into from the Nate from, from the Islamic school. Um, yeah, so we, we're here to set the record straight and really clear up a lot of things that people say. But, yeah, what was, what was the other question that you had? Please ask how they pray and to who. All right, so first of all, you have to break down what prayer is. Right, prayer is communicating, and most people when they pray, they're like begging God or Allah or someone for something. Um, prayer to us is communication. 
Prayer basically is the art of um, speaking without listening. Meditation is the art of listening without speaking. So in order for us to get in contact with our answers, we use the form of meditation. Yeah, and uh, in terms of prayer, um, we do have a prayer book. We, well, most of the things we do, we have a book that addresses prayer. Um, but the question I want to ask you is this year, why do you need to pray? Really, like, if you really think about it, why do you need to pray and who are you praying to anyway? Because if you're having a communication or conversation with someone, you're supposed to get a response. Like me and you're talking, if I pick up the phone and I spoke to you, um, or I rang your number, I'm, I'm waiting and I want to hear somebody on the other side. So when people are saying they're praying, are they getting any response? Because a lot of the times, you know, people don't get a response. Um, and it means like you're just praying to thin air, no one's listening. But we, we actually communicate with our ancestors. So it's a, it's a communication based on the fact that we are linked to them by our DNA. And so our ancestors that cross over or translate, um, they're still available and we can still communicate with them. So yeah, when we, when we communicate with our ancestors, we wait and we listen and we hear a response back. I'd like to hear more about the dolphins germinating the planet. I always knew there was so much more to them than people give them credit for. Sentient beings. I kind of touched on that already. Yeah, Nun Project. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, like you said, I don't know if you want to talk about the Nun Project. <laughs> but, yeah, that's a, that's a good point because what it is, like we say, life didn't originate here. And on certain planets, they had problems. And, like, um, the planet Risk, which the ozone layer was depleting and they had to... Because sometimes, another thing people forget, these um, extraterrestrials, they have wars and they fight and they destroy, you know, each other's planets and stuff. And sometimes people have to then evacuate and go somewhere else. So this is what was happening. And in order to survive, these extraterrestrials had to build shifts, ships to go elsewhere and try and start over and live and live life. And... Um, so they put the, I kind of mentioned it before, they germinated, um, they, they put the, the cells into the dolphins and sent them here to come and start all over again and kind of repopulate. So there's more information to, to that story though. Um, we have a, a scroll called I Was There, which is here, that goes into that. Um, but yeah, a lot of the information people are asking us about, you can go on, on online, um, nashat.co.uk which is the bookstore where you can get all of these all these scrolls and books that talk about many of the things we talk about but remember we've also now put it together in a nice little concise form for you to get started and you can also just do the course online um, and yeah you can kind of speed fast track because remember the master teacher Parna Babianun Dr Malachi Z York has been teaching since the 60s so you're talking about we've accumulated, what, like 30 years of information. And when we are addressing the questions, we're only touching on them. You know, we're really only touching on them. And there's like so much more, but obviously for, for time and just to give people a, a taste, we, we give you what we can. Adam was a single-celled organism. The taking his rib to form a woman represents cell division. Adam didn't exist. That's, again, prove it. Like, that's what I'm saying. What he, whoever said that is saying, it's making reference to what I said about the Adam story. It's coming from the Atom story, which in the scientific world, they will say Atom, you see. So that, yeah, you're right, in terms of atoms separating and becoming, you know what I mean? Because you start off with one, as in the hydrogen, which has one proton and one electron. Yeah, that's orbiting the, the proton. And then, as you said, you're going to helium and then you start to see more and more atoms being added. But what we're saying is the atom, as in the biblical story, is talking about the gravitation of the atomites. Yeah, and two different things. There were many atoms because Adam goes to the word Edom as well, which deals with blood, yeah? This way, the Edomites. 
um, because when you're saying Adam, you're saying red, ruddy, yeah? And that's, that's dealing with that gravitation of the Adamites. And so, yes, in that respect, but in terms of everyone coming from one being called Adam, that's, that's not factual because we've got different blood types, different... We're the only people on the planet with hair. Um, and again, it might sound rude to some people, but that's what makes us unique because our hair comes out and it grows and curls in the follicle of nine dealing with the nine ether, whereas the Caucasian, their hair comes out and if it goes it goes downwards into, you know, a six. And if you look at the races, you have the Negroids who have woolly hair or the nine ether. When you look at the East Indian, this is why I was saying that the Nation of Islam and like the Moorish Science Temple, they were talking about Asiatic black man. The Asiatic black man is the East Indian. When you look at... Um, when you look at them, they, they, they're brown or dark skinned like us, but their hair is six ether. And then when you look at a Caucasian, the Caucasian, again, Caucasian deals with a particular species that were in the Caucasus mountain. But if you look at their traits, it's taken an Asian that now has lost the color. So you've got a brown or black, i use that for the purposes of the explanation, with nappy woolly hair, then you got the six ether, which is still brown, but their hair is now straight. Then you look at a Caucasian, you're taking that same being and they lose their color because of the, the, the leprosy or they become albinos. Albinism. And then, mm. yeah, then it, it, they lose the, the pigmentation and they can't take the sun. And, you know, we can go into how the gravitation went from the, the, the black to the brown to the yellow to the transparent. And this relates to the different races. That's why we talk. I uh, keep going back to the the scientific terms of the Homo naledi, Homo habilis, which is all black African, to the Denisovan, to the Homo florensis, which is all Asians. Whether you want to call them Korean, China, they're all part of that. Then you got the last one, the Cro Magnon and the Neanderthal, which deals with the Caucasian, but with the Caucasian, you had different graftations as well. I mentioned the Flugerods, exactly, like, like they were um, in the caves, in the mountains. And then when the graftation was taking place, when this is where that whole story of Jakob and, yeah, that comes from that story where they were then grafted and they came down from the mountains and, you know, raped the, the people that were down, down, um, down from the mountains. But yeah, I hope that's answered that question. Why are white people not written about in ancient texts? Number one, there's no white people. That's again, that's what we're saying about misinformation, yeah? They, they're not white, just like we're not black. The reason they're not written about because they are gravitation. And they were written about, as I mentioned, in the Temple of Seti, where there was a wall that actually described the gravitation that took place. And this is why we say, like, Caucasians, they don't have any records. They don't produce any, like, artefacts. You know, everything they talk about, from Jesus, all the beings in the Bible, you can trace them back to Egypt. Like, when you say Moses, you're talking about Thotmus. When you say that, so when we say, how can you go to Egypt and are able to dig up and find things from 10,000 and beyond? But you're telling us Jesus was here 2,000 years ago and you can't produce any evidence of him ever being here. You can't produce any evidence of Moses, um, Abraham, no one. Mm. There's no, like, actual evidence to prove that these people exist, existed. But yet, you can go to Egypt and find burial tombs, take DNA and prove that they existed. So, white is... It's a it's a wrong interpretation for transparent or pale, the absence of color. And that would be coming from their makers, the the Palladians. That's right, because the Palladians are in their image and their mm -hmm. likeness. Um, like like it says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. He said, "Women been here longer because every man comes from a woman. She still would have had to get pregnant by a man first. Excellent question. This was one of the ones I saw and I was looking forward to this.
Because, you know, like the first part, we literally scratched the surface. Yeah, there was many things we didn't go into. And, and that question, when you start to deal with women and men, you're dealing with XX for a woman and XY for a man. But before that, you have XYX and YXY, which deals with the hermaphrodite and the hemophrodites, right? And the reason the, the woman is first, because when you look at a Y, it's a defective X. So one of the stems of the X, the one on the right-hand side, has been broken off. So this is why even scientists will tell you that the X has more genetic material. And if you look at it, even on a telescope, it's bigger than the Y. So a man will have everything a woman has, like what we call mammary glands, and he doesn't feed a child or a baby, he doesn't produce breasts. So the way women produce, or certain reptiles, they're able to produce through something called a sexual reproduction, like single cells breaking into other cells. And when you look at the genetics, the genitals of a female, she has um, a clitoris, right? I hope, I don't know if this is censored, but like she has, well, this is also biology in it. So um, the clitoris is actually a, a small penis because when the child is like between, like up to six weeks, the gender is not known, it's neutral gender. This is what, when I was saying about the hermaphrodite and the hemophrodite, these are beings that can have both genitals, yeah? But what happens is, again, we have a, a scroll that goes into that. When you see the child or the fetus at six weeks, yeah, the penis in the woman will go down and go in and become a clitoris. The male, it will go out and become a penis. Yeah, so women were here first and they, they were even able to reproduce by themselves because they secrete fluids, yeah, called uh, um, the urethral. Yeah, yeah um, you, can, you can check out and research pathogenesis, yeah, which deals with women because originally women used to lay eggs and they still lay eggs now. Mm. It's just that like chickens lay eggs and the, ch the eggs come out and then they wait and sit on them until they hatch for the baby to come out. Women now have it within them until when the egg hatches, they call it their water breaking. Yeah, so they were actually able to impregnate themselves from the fluids that were secreting from the penis back into themselves. And back in those days, they used to always have twins. This is why you have two mammary glands. And people will say, how is it possible? There's actually some women still on the planet today that have been able to give birth to themselves. And this is where the whole like Virgin Mary and that concept comes from, because they were saying, how did you get pregnant without a man? But yeah, do, do some research on the different chromosomes. As I said, the XYX, the YXY, and then you have the XX and you have the XY, which is male or female and then you have the chromosomes which you'll have 23 chromosomes from the man 23 chromosomes from the female and then you get the 46 chromosomes that make you up dna is actually the science of today like our ancestors that's their technology and they can break down and prove everything now by way of genetics i don't know if do you want to yeah add like, like, to like the bible story like God putting man in in Adam into a deep sleep and then taking a rib out and then creating woman, like come on, how, how's man gonna accept that? How's how's there no fallopian tube or womb here in the, in man's rib? So how's God creating a woman out of man's rib? Like explain that. But mm. God's supposed to have this faith and belief, believe God can do all these things. Man just accepting that rubbish there. You know look what I mean? Look at this as well. When you look at the word woman, you always see man inside <laughs> yeah. a woman. You look at the word lady. You see lad inside of lady. You look at the word female, you see male inside of female. So it's she... actually <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> it's actually quite obvious. Yeah. Um I don't know the people that want to fight this. Yes, we understand about the sperm going into the woman now to create because nowadays a lot of women don't remember how they used to do it or are able to to still do it. So now they need a man. And remember that we say the domain of the planet is woman. That's why everyone says she, and they refer to everything as she performs good for me, mother nature. But when you come out of the planet now, you're dealing with God. 
that's a he because he's not from here, you see. So this is where all the, the misconception comes in. And I touched on this last video where I said about the dolphins, right? The extraterrestrials or our ancestors, they actually put um, a capsule inside the dolphins and transported the dolphins here. And when the dolphins went in the water, that melted and then germinated the waters. I'm talking about early life forms, yeah? This is why people will tell you how we're genetically close to the dolphin. And if you start even looking at the chromosomes and things like that, and then life evolved from the waters onto land, which again, we kind of touched on the last time where I explained that when you go into ancient cultures and they tell you about the creation stories, the Bible stories, if you go to like the Dogons or you go to the Egyptians or the Zoastics, the, Mer the Sumerians, they have a different account of the creation stories. And, and that's where you find in ancient Egypt, they tell you that a tomb, yeah, there's, there's a picture on the wall where they show, um, they show him or a moon with the phallus mm -hmm. and they show you and they call it a tomb. This is where the word atom comes from. Because the creation story as relayed by the ancient Egyptians tells you about the seed or the, um, the phallus of the seed or the germination coming from atom. It's no coincidence that atom, atom, and then Adam. They tell you now, they say Adam was the first man, but that's coming from that story of how the atom, because when we go to the atoms, I think I touched on this the last time, where you have, on this side, you have hydrogen, helium, going this side and then going that side, you have E1, E2, E3 going that side, which is dealing with the etheric side, which deals with quarks, biaps, zeles, etc. cetera. So um, what people are calling how life started from a religious point of view, it's a very kind of like watered down version of what actually really took place, you know? So this is why in ancient Egypt, we had secrets that were only secreted to those people who were taught and initiated. And all the Europeans that became known as the fathers of science, you know, Socrates, Plato, aristocrat, all of these guys, they were initiated in ancient Egypt. And when you start looking at where civilization came from, you're gonna go back to the Nile Valley to, to Egypt. And to this day, people are marveling and wondering about the Egyptians, how did they build the pyramids? you know, and the things that they did, how were they able to do brain operations and brain surgery and, you know, doing things that, till this day, people are still trying to, to figure out. Just, just a, a quick um, correction as well. When, when they talk about um, Egypt being the greatest civilization, we are the civilizers. We are the ones that civilized the rest of the planet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's important because when they say you're civilized, they're trying to say you were in a savage state yeah, and somebody came state. and civilized mm, you. Mm. But no, nah, it's, it's the other way around. We've decided and put a course together to help people because we give a lot of information and like our course is designed for you to do it in your own time. It's an online course. Um, you can just log in when you want and it will give you a fast track to spirituality and consciousness. We also have a book um, which we, we've put together. We've made it quite small. Um, so you can carry it with you in your pocket and it's it's going to, it goes into a little bit more detail than the course but yeah it's something where it will speed or fast track you to a point where all these things we're talking about like the timeline how far back are we going because you're talking about seven to six trillion years where we were in our original state as gases in air pockets or what we call the etheric um, nature and as I gave a timeline, I can jump where we're like 96, um, 93 billion years ago, the birth of our son. Um, you go to like the Nibiru incident, you're talking about 24 billion years ago. You're talking about the creation of the moon and all that, like 66 billion years ago, all the way down to like, um, I mentioned the meteorite shower, you got the Jurassic period where you got like the dinosaurs and all of that. Um, then that goes to 17 million, 250,000 years ago when the meteorite came and wiped out some of the, um, the dinosaurs and that. Then the next one, 200, um, 2 million, 250,000 years ago, 
all the way down to your Cro-Magnon and the Neanderthals and all that, all the way down to 6,000 years ago with the creation of the Adamites, all the way down to now what we're calling religions where you got the Abrahamic stories from 4,004 4, years ago to the Christian story, which is like 2,000 years ago, to the Islamic stories, which is like 1,400 years ago, to today where people are just lost and confused about where do things start. So we've put all of this together in a nice little compact form for you to, to get hold of so that you can read, do your own research. Because some of the things we talk about can sound crazy <laughs> to some people who don't know about Food for the Gods and mm. Shambhala, Nagata, the centre within where different extraterrestrials have been living for millions of years. We're talking about the Aquarian age and a lot of people are waking up because on TikTok and social media, you are hearing people talk about these things, the simulation that mm. people are living in. AI. There is a lot. Mm. AI, you know, there's a lot going on on the planet and we have one being who we refer to as the supreme being, who is God that actually came down himself. He didn't send his son. He was like, mm. I'm coming down. I'm going to come and set the record straight. I'm here now. Many people spoke of him, because when you look at like um, the Nation of Islam with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he spoke about him coming. Every Bible, Quran, they talk about him, as I said, Al-Qadir in the, in the Quran, the angel Michael, in the book of Malachi, chapter four, verses two, um, chapter four, two, he talks about him coming with the, as the son of righteousness. He's here and he's authored over a thousand books covering every subject and every question you can possibly ask. And even though we're doing quick answers, we do have classes every week, every Saturday, where people can join in online from wherever they are, or they can come here. Um, and it's really to help raise people's consciousness. We're here for humanity. And whether people accept it or not, the current world is on a, on, on a demise and it's going to end um, in the way that people know it. And yeah, things are gonna change. So. You know, be be on the right side. Don't be like, don't be like Cain. <laughs> don't kill your brother, man. Just deal with love, unity, and let's come together. But it's like these people as well. They they go on like Baba Yenun don't even exist. Like the mm. way it's like you see, um, was it Khalid Muhammad Farhan on all these talk shows, but. You've never heard them talk about Malachi, only in a negative term. You know what mm. I mean? That's what. But they won't talk about his books, his real, what, what he's created for the for the for the masses. You know what I mean? So it's like they're going like, yeah, the man don't even exist, but like he's, he's known worldwide. You know yeah. what I mean? So what, what's what's up with that? That's why I mentioned some of those people's names because um, you know, like they will avoid him. Yeah, like... Bill Carson. Ask him where he gets his information. Or ask him, <laughs> has he heard of? Dr. Malachi Ziyuk. Ask 19 Keys. Yeah, 19 Keys. Ask them, man, and then watch their faces. If they, they, they can't say they haven't heard from him. That's why I say you can't have a conversation called high level conversations and then you're not talking about certain yeah. things. Like, let's have a high level conversation for real. And um, who else is out there? Polite. Polite mm -hmm. obviously was a part of us um, until he kind of. Yeah, and some people would deny and say they're not reading the books, but there's certain information that. Yeah. When you know where the source is coming from, it is, it's, yeah, you, can only, you can only fool yourself when we know. Was um, it like 20, 30 years ago, no one talking about Anunnaki, Nibiru, reptilians and all that kind of stuff. Look, at, look what we're doing now, man. We, people thought we were crazy <laughs> yeah. when we used to talk about extraterrestrials back in the day. You know, you've got books like Mission. Yeah, look, is there a God? Shambhala Mission Earth, Nagata, yeah. Mission Earth. There's so many books that he... That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Most of the people that you're hearing today, yeah, they're babies in comparison to, to Dr. York. And um, they just popped on the scene the other day. Like I said, look at their names, look at what they represent, what they wear, look at who's behind them, look at what they put out. Have they built any um, communities? Have they, what, what have they done or are doing today? not what they did yesterday, you know what I mean? And we're not trying to, like, we respect everyone, innit? Like, Rastafarians, let's talk about Haile Selassie. Um, remember, I mentioned, like, if you talk about Rastafarians, they got that, that flag there, the red, gold and green, which was the flag they took from the Mahdi of Sudan. And he got that from Noble Drew Ali. And Noble Drew Ali is where the Moorish Science Temple, and you had, as I said, um, 
Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who talk about Fahad Muhammad. Yeah, so when you trace everybody back, you will see who's behind them. Mm. You got Yahweh Ben Yahweh, you got Malcolm X, um, Ben Anamin Carter. Yeah, you got um, Clarence, Martin Luther King, Garvey. All of these people have done something, but it's like you're running a relay and you hand over the baton. Mm. And at, at the end, you want someone who's going to finish the race. That would be like Hussein Bolt, isn't it? Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. you, you put him at the end because you know, like, even if you're losing ground, yeah. once he gets that baton, he's going to make up. And that's the analogy I'm using to say all these people, they did a little part, they've done their part, mm. but right now we're in a day and time where the job has to be finished. And the man that's qualified is Dr. York regardless of what anyone wants to Check say. Check the books, and man. The yeah, books are and there. Like, we, 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 we will have that conversation with anyone. It's not as know. if man's wrote one book and put a, a next cover on it, a different cover. These are different topics, different books, you know what I mean, dealing with different topics, you know what I mean, subjects. It's like, come yeah. on, man. I mean, like... You can't test. I mean, come on, man. Like, yeah, like I said, we're, we're not... Um, we're, not, we're, not, we're not shying away from dealing with anyone's thing, but at the end of the day... This is Wul Sabat. Um, it's our culture. It's our way of life. Um, yeah, it's the way. And his, his, always, his favorite word is always said that don't believe me, do your own research. As, Check it as, out. as man from the, the Quran, Torah, Bible told you that, they just told you to accept that, have faith, belief, don't question. And if you do question, you're heathen or a troublemaker. You know what I mean? You can't question their things. Why would it take God six days? To create the world, then rest. How is he resting? You know what I mean? Little things like that were like, must yeah. is already addressed. Debunked it. Yeah, debunked, yeah. cleared it out of the way, mate. But anyway, let's keep going with the questions. Yeah, 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 we'll yeah. just answer as many of them as we can. What came before the emerald tablets of Thoth the Atlantean or the seven hermetic principles in the tarot? Also, can you ask if they have any more knowledge on sacred geometry or even numerology and if there's any true significance about life path numbers? Whew. Big, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, before the Emerald Tablets, remember I mentioned Tahuti, who is known by many names. He's the person that wrote the Emerald Tablets. He's known as Thoth. He's known as Hermes, Trismegistus. Um, yeah. What came before, as I said, our ancestors they have crystal tablets called. They call, people know of them as the Akasha records. These Akasha records are like crystal tablets that store information on every subject you can think of. This is where the red me stone, which some people may be familiar with, called uh, it became the Kama Sutra that people are using, dealing with tantric sex and stuff like that, yeah? So, yeah, our ancestors in the Tharu, they have records which are stored on these crystal tablets, which people know as Akasha. Um, the Akasha records, and it's mentioned in the Quran, it's mentioned in certain places, and people don't really know what it is because it says it's stored in Ilion, yeah? Um, Ilion is, as we said, the, um, the galaxy that our master teacher, Pana Babianun, comes from, from a planet. The eighth planet in Ilion is called Risk. And this is where they get these, these tablets from, and it has information about the past, the present, and the future, yeah? so. Tahuti being one of he's one of those beings, the 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 scribe in ancient Egypt, he's he's depicted with the beak. You see the being with a beak, and he's always carrying like a pen and like a board, and he's always recording and writing things. Yeah, so that's what's before the Emerald Tablets. In the in the Superman movie, actually, they show you that where in fact that whole Superman movie is talking about that story I was talking about where they had to evacuate and they put the, a mm. child um, and they put this crystal with him and then when he came to earth when he was old enough he took the crystal and he went and he threw it in the um, Antarctic isn't it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and yep. then you saw that a whole city <laughs> came up and that crystal had all the information about you know his his, mm. his past life his father and from Krypton where he came from it's a similar thing but they tell you these stories in movies so you think it's not real when we kind of talk about it. But we're living in a different day and time yeah. um, and we have to make these things known. Numerology is, yes, yeah, science. It's a science of numbers and mathematics. So, yes, everything can be broken down into mathematics. Um, 
And it's broken down into zeros and ones when you start to look at binary, like in the matrix at the beginning, they show you the zeros and ones because everything that is physical, when it's digitized, it becomes binary or zeros and ones. Yeah, so um, the numbers, yeah, they're mathematics. And so like the, the people call angel numbers and stuff like that. Sometimes they're trying to give you a message um, and it's going to be obviously more relevant to you. You have to kind of work it out. But yeah, there's definitely power in numerology because I mentioned today about the number 19, the 19th elder who is, you know, the being known as Yanun and of the 24 elders. And as I said, the Quran, the seal over it was the number 19. And when you start to break it down, you see like it has a lot of power. The Bible, and the reason it has power is because the English words that have been translated from the original, yeah, they all have numbers. This is how someone who's able to crack the code of the scripture, they will see the numbers in a sequence. So let's say a number was missing or out of place where they've moved certain books or certain verses or certain chapters, you know, like in Genesis, the books of Jeremiah have, have been moved. Like you'll be able to see it because it's a, it's a, it's a code. It's the same with the Torah where that has the seven. That's why you have seven days of creation, seven heavens. Um, what's the other sevens? Seven realms, planes. Yeah, you got like the menorah, which is the seven candlestick. Mm. There's so many number sevens um, because again, it's that cold. So yeah, numbers are very powerful and yeah, they, they do have significance. Um, you have to be able to work it out and crack the code basically, like the Da Vinci code. Mm. <laughs> do we have a communal purpose while on this plane of existence? Yeah, yeah, community, that's what it's about, to build work together um, and and like, this is what's happening, like I was saying about the matrix and the programming. If you're not aware and conscious, then you're gonna be subjected to whatever someone else is programming you. But if you're aware and you come together in a community, this is why all our ancient, um, you know, cultures were built on communities. And even our organization um, or our culture, the master teacher, he built several communities like, you know, Tamare, Egypt of the West, because when you're residing in one place, you can actually then practice your culture. Not only that, the energy and the resonance frequency when you're all together, you can like, say someone is not feeling well, someone else can help mm. and recharge their energy. And so it's yeah, definitely a communal thing and a community thing. Recommended books. My goodness. Mm. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. Let me, <laughs> let me recommend some books. We've got a few. Um, it depends on where you are. Yeah. And what what you know your journey is so far. So we've got that one, the mind. Right. Mm. This is a good one to start with because there's a lot of mental health issues and problems at the moment, and that's because like if you think of religion, yeah, it actually causes mental health problems because you're talking about believing in things that don't exist, like a talking snake. You're talking about this God that's going to burn you up in hell forever. You're talking about... Unicorns, you know I mean? dragons. Unicorns, all kinds of stuff that if you actually believe that, you're going to be like, you know what I mean, in turmoil because you don't really have the facts. Your potential... Your potential, meaning that the power within you, you can be anything you want and do anything you, you want to do. So tapping into your potential and the four higher senses we talked about before, telepathy, intuition, clairvoyance, and psychometry. Actually, should we explain those, right? Psychometry is the ability to object read, yeah? So you can touch something and know everything about what happened. Like, they show this in movies, like detective movies, when like somebody gets murdered and they may leave a cloth or something and they will get people who have the ability to touch that cloth and use psychometry to, they see images and they can help solve the case. Intuition is, you know, sometimes like you will hear a voice or something will tell you, don't do that, don't go there. And you're like, my intuition tells me, but sometimes we dismiss it. Telepathy is a telephone to the Pathites or the ability to <laughs> communicate telepathically. Um, what's the last one now? Uh, clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is kind of a French word, clear vision. That's mm. what it means, clear vision. So 
your ability to see things before they happen or tap into other dimensions and have a clear vision. And some people will be like, I had deja vu because they've seen it before or they've time traveled and they've seen this incident before, yeah? So clear vision is clairvoyance. But yeah, Shambhala and Agatha and the cities within the earth, this ties into a lot of extraterrestrials that have been here and um, still living in the caverns in the center of the earth. And um, go ahead. When they talk about um, hell as well, that's that's why they're yeah. talking about it because obviously some of the extraterrestrials that they encountered, obviously they they, they couldn't deal with. So yeah, yeah, that was their concept of, of hell. They were trying to because, yeah. go and live there, and they mm. drove them away basically. <laughs> um, yeah, a few more. Um, this one's called the spiritual you after the physical you dies, which deals with the question that was asked, like what happens to you after you, you pass on or, you know, in the physical anyway. And this kind of relates to that one as well. It's called the cycles of life and death because, okay, life is a cycle, like we say, yeah? The burning that takes place is when you breathe, right? You can define life as breathing, innit? Because if you, if you stop breathing, you're gonna die. But what happens is when you're breathing, you're taking in oxygen and you're giving back out carbon dioxide. Carbon is a residue of burning, which you can find as C6 in the periodic element chart. But what happens is that, that breath that you take, it, it's energy and it goes to the blood and the acid in the blood is what burns it and that's what gives off the carbon. So life is really a burning. And, on, and when you stop, like when you, stop breathing or burning this is where they say your body is cold because the life has left the body and your body sets into rigor mortis and so yeah so that deals with the cycle because you keep cycling until you don't have to come back no more and this final one is there a god um that's a question because like we've been talking about the concept of god to many people is based on religious books and not what it really is, as in you being that energy being that has the ability to transform and transcend and um, yeah, keep moving on in the different realms and having different forms of existence. But some people never make it and they're trapped here or this is the end for them. So not everyone has the ability to, um, yeah, to, to, to move on. Is the Book of Enoch the first book? Well, no. Mm. Nope. We talked about the Emerald Tablets and, you know, all these other books that predate all of those. Book of Jubilee as well. Yeah, there's so many books. Yeah. America is way older than Africa and is said that it was the first land that came out of the waters. America is the old world. Actually, this is hidden. That's why you don't hear any history. The oldest place on Earth is in America. You remember I touched on this before when I was saying, like, that America is still connected. All the continents are connected underwater. Um, but yeah, they're the same. Africa is older because when you deal with Pangaea and Pangaea, however people pronounce it, it's like all the landmass was together in one spot. And the center of that was where these extraterrestrials that came originally landed. And then with the continental drift, um, people that were living on that side called, like I said, the Olmecs. And then you have people in Africa like the Patarites who literally walked over and they brought the rubber plants that was on this side and they planted them along the coast on the other side. Then you had um, Chinese people called like the, the Sheng Dynasty with Hu Sheng. They came over from, from the East to America. They mixed with the Olmecs and produced what people are calling the American Indians, which is really the Native Americans. So when you look at the features of the Native Americans, and you look at the Chinese, you see that they have the same features. And the DNA also ties in. So when they say it's the oldest, yes, it's the same because it, it's the same land. It's just that it's split in half. Yeah, and the people on that side who didn't look at it like the slave trade and coming from Africa to America, they're saying we're not African because we were already here. But the point is the DNA is African because it will go back to the original root races. So whether you're in America, UK, or wherever you are in the world, 
your DNA is going to tie back to your ancestors and to where you come from. And then when you took, check, check, um, talking about archaeological findings, the oldest remains have been found in Africa. That's right. Africa has the most natural resources on this planet 100 times over. Why are they lagging behind in tech? <laughs> They they actually not now mm. because um they there are lots of um you know I mean, inventions and things that are taking place but the real point to that is that the West has stolen and keeps pilfering and stealing all the resources so all like the cobalt from Congo you know all the gold the the platinum the um even the oil a, a lot of the resources that have built the West up have been stolen or taken from Africa and then they've put Africa in a state of debt, which makes them, they can't really develop because the West, France, um, you know, America, UK, etc. they take a lot of the resources, but now people are waking up and they're not as easy to give away the resources as they used to. And the thing is the movie Black Panther kind of showed you how in the movie, obviously they had a resource called what? vibranium which deals with vibrations <laughs> and you know africa once it starts to come back together and this is why they never wanted africa to unite uh, and they were f afraid of people like gaddafi because he was trying to bring a one african union together so that they could kind of like manage their resources better but it's happening now because um things are things are changing you know but it's a matter of the divisions with re religion mm. and all these things that they make us think that we can't do. We have to be relying on someone else. We're praying to the wrong gods, praying to Jesus, Muhammad, everyone else, apart from coming together and uniting so we can build. Um, but everyone knows Africa is the next frontier. That's why China is in Africa. That's what everyone's going to Africa right now. So they know that the resources on the planet, in fact, all the resources that's been stolen from Africa, it's only about 10% of what is still there. So everyone knows that to survive, you have to link up with Africa. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, if they, if they left us alone, if they took back their, their religion and all that stuff and left us alone, we'd be successful, mate. There won't be no one that could take over us. Yeah. Because as we've got, we've got all the natural resources, all the natural minerals. Do me a solid favour and ask why are so-called black people in despair around the world and why have the other races around the world against or has turned their backs on so-called black people when it's clear that we are the fathers of all cultures on the planet? How and why did we end up in slavery? Why was it so easy to enslave the greatest people on the planet? We stopped knowing and started believing. That's right. <laughs> we started believing their... their, their um alien religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, and we stopped tapping into our, our um, true science of who and what we are. Yeah, um, that's a big, big point, the religion. Religion is one of the biggest reasons, because they came into Africa, took all the gold, took all the oil, took all the mineral, they still take into their cobalt, and then they gave you a Bible. This is why I said before that black people hate slavery, but they love Christianity which doesn't make sense because that's what you were given for you to give up your royalty, your, you know, your minerals, your power. And, and now it's about waking up. That's why we do this. And this channel helps because by, by waking up, you realize the games and the tricks that are being played. And then you can start to be the God that you really are and utilize the resources in the right way as the caretakers of the planet. Who built the pyramids and why? Our ancestors, and they were assist well the extraterrestrials who are our ancestors, and they were assisted by the great beings that were on the planet at the time. And another another thing that people may not be aware of is extraterrestrials had technology called 3D printing, which a lot of people are now starting to get back into, and they were able to utilize these three massive 3D printers to to you know do a lot of the building on the planet that's why sometimes people can't work out how how did they do it you know but yeah it was built by extraterrestrials and assisted by by men on on the planet did you ask why they were built as well 
Okay. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> like schools of thought, higher learning. So the pyramids will give off um, SCW, which will be standing like com column the wave. What size of pyramid? Yeah, we've got a book called Science, Science of the Pyramids, of the pyramid. actually. Um, but it's many purposes. So mm. that's one my brothers mentioned. They were like schools, but they were also built on like specific magnetic, um, the magnetic grid on the planet mm. for extraterrestrials to come and charge their crafts because they use a different form of technology called blast electricity. Um, they were used to balance out the planet. Um, so if you look at most of the structures on the planet, South America, they're all running on a partic on particular ley lines. Um, yeah, there were many reasons for the pyramids and they're not, the way they look today is not what they used to be. Um, they used to also have like um, lime scale, mm. they were proper like shiny, they were different pyramids as well. And another thing is there are more pyramids in other places than the pyramids that in Giza that everybody talks about. There's a lot of pyramids in, um, in Sudan, in South America, you know, just different places. So they were built for many different reasons. Yeah, and the ones, the, the pyramids in Sudan are older than the ones in Giza. Yeah, and they, they give off something called standard columnar waves, yeah. which were helping people to transform from um, a negative, negative aura or energy field to a, a positive, negative, and then to positive, positive. So they were also used for what we call the journey within, because when you did that ritual, you were able to transform your energy from a negative aura to a positive aura. Yeah. I oh, can get that in El Mugaraj. That's that's the ritual that we're talking about. Goes more into depth than that. Where do they get their clothes from? I'm trying to cop some gear. <laughs> Littles, get... Littles. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> now you can get them right here yeah. uh, at Nashat Dakota UK or come to the store. Um, yeah, we, we have the garbs here because that's the thing. We live in our culture as well. Like, so yes, yeah, it's, it's not just the clothes, it's a whole lifestyle, the healthy side of things as well. We've got herbs and minerals, you know, to help you get your health in order because that's the first part of healing. When you look at the word health, you see heal. Um, so yeah, we, we're here with herbs, the, the mind as well, the books are for the mind and then the your physical body, so you, we take care of both your spiritual and your physical. What was was happening before solar blew up? That's a bit of a weird question. Mm. But, but what was happening? Well, you have like, if you look up in this um, cosmos now, you have many, many, many constellations. So beings were living their life and doing whatever they do on their planets like we're doing here. Um, it's like I mentioned the last time, like we have a sun, yeah? that provides the source of life on this planet. And we're just getting on with our life and doing whatever we're doing. But that um, sun, which is now hydrogen and helium, is burning out. Imagine like it gets to a point where it's about to burn out completely. If you're not aware of it, you're not gonna know. And when it gets to that and then it just blows up, then catastrophe. Mm. But some people who monitor what's going on um, they will know, okay, we're getting to a point where we need to find another source of energy or we've got to actually evacuate and leave and go and find another way of surviving. So many, many beings from different places, Aldebaran, Beetlejuice, um, like we said, um, Orion, Sirius, just, just get a map of the constellations and look how many different types of, do you know what I mean, galaxies and they are. So there's many beings doing whatever they do on their planet and some come here, visit and go back. Dreams? I would love to learn about dreams. Wow, yeah, there's so many. <laughs> there's so much to that question. So there's different types of dreams for a start. So there are dreams where you're just like getting rid of excess things that you've been storing in your subconscious. Yeah, so you might watch movies, you might go places, and there's a lot of information you've stored that you purge during sleep. So sometimes it's just a like play out of those things. Then you have visions, which are messages that are given to you, specifically for you. Then you'll have where you travel, as in astral project, and go places and visit. Um, so it all depends on the dream and, and what's happening. and how it relates to you. No one can really 
interpret your dream for you because you have to do that because it might connect to something that you you know you were doing or whatever so yeah it depends on the dream and what type of dream please ask about hitler's situation and his craft okay like so obviously the the war that everyone talks about with germany um hitler was about to basically wipe out <laughs> and um take over europe and um, because Hitler was in contact with extraterrestrials. And the same extraterrestrials are the Pleiadians that we've mentioned before. And that's why they he went about trying to create something called a superior race, which he termed the Aryan race. And he actually did experiments and produced a blonde-haired, blue-eyed being, and he thought he had created a supreme being. And he went to the Olympics in 1966. And he tried to present to the world that he had created this supreme being. But what happened is there was a black uh, Nagaru brother called Jesse Owens. And when they ran the 100 metres, he literally just tore this guy to pieces. And Hitler was very upset because obviously he's here saying he's created a supreme being. And he got up and if you go back and watch the video, he was upset and he wanted to leave the stadium. But he was in contact with witches called Madame Blavatsky, who ran something called... Um, Theological Society. That's it, thank you. The, yeah, can you say again? Theological Society. Yeah, and, and they were basically... Um, a, they were mediums and were able to speak through with these extraterrestrials, Pleiadians, to Hitler, and they chose him, because mm. um, the name Hitler is actually one of the 200 fallen angels as well who was an incarnation of the Hitler, but it's, his name was spelled H-I-T-L-A, mm. and this one is H-I-T-L-E-R, yeah? But, yeah, so obviously you hear about the, um, the, the the gas chambers and all of that because what he was doing was, like, listening to these beings, and they gave him technology for crafts. That's why he was winning the war, because he was getting assistance from these extraterrestrials, and he had he was making crafts with the technology, and... In the Antarctica, a lot of these crafts were found. That's why we said that when you look at different extraterrestrial crafts, not all of them are extraterrestrial, as in they're not from outside. Some of them are made right here because of the technology that they were able to, to share with some of these extraterrestrials. And um, they have aerodynamics. You, you, to, to have aerodynamics is because you're traveling through air here. And so, yeah, he had those crafts and... Um, they were they were kept secret in terms of like Area 51 mm -hmm. and all these places. They show you in the movies and they make a joke of it. But this is where the Roswell incident mm. and certain crafts and certain aliens have crashed here. They take like pieces of the craft and they take them to these places where they study them and try to reverse engineer the crafts. So there are lots of crafts that you're seeing that are from here. Like the governments have them or like different, you know what I mean, China, Russia, America, they're making crafts. The stealth, if you go back and look at the, that stealth plane that the America had, um, I can't remember, back in like World War II mm. and that, that was technology, extraterrestrial technology. But they've perfected it, obviously, since then. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if you want that, to that, um, to that, my brother. Was it Bob, Bob Lazar? Yeah. He, 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 um, he worked in Groom Lake and he was... They were talking about back engineering certain crafts that they found. I think they said they, they had nine crafts, but that talks. He talks about it in Man from Planet Risk. Yeah, the teacher goes into who Bob Lazar is, and then yeah, I mean there are many many whistleblowers now that work for the you know what I mean like NASA, FBI, and all of that that are now telling you about they they were working on extraterrestrial crafts. But I hope that answered that question for that person on Hitler. Oh, the another thing is. Hitler was a part of the Third Reich. What people don't realise is that Germany actually lost the war, but the Third Reich won the war. Because what happened is that, as we're taught, he went back in time, because they had time machines as well. That's why they were, not, they were not able to find him or his body. But a lot of Germans then went to America. And a lot of, even like, even the UK, you know, a lot of them kind of infiltrated and they're now running the world. Um, you know what I mean? Like your Albert Einstein and all certain people that were actually um, scientists from, 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 Germ from Germany. 
and they, they went over to America. So a lot of the scientific community in America and the UK and the West generally are ex-Germans. Mm. Even for the NASA, NASA programme, a lot of German scientists there. Mm. And even in the UK, mm. people have talked mm. about, you know, the royal family being yeah. from, from Germany and so on. So there's a, yeah, it's a lot of information out there. David Icke and certain people mm. goes into this information. Bill Cooper as well. Yeah. Maxwell, Jordan Maxwell. Mm. Um, yeah, there are lots of people that go into it. What 10 books would you highly recommend many should read to gain knowledge of the many things you share about life's experiences? <laughs> Number one, get hold of our book because <laughs> it kind of gives you a synopsis and a quick, um, yeah, fast track. And then after that, your mind's going to be open mm. to the different things we've spoken about. And then we obviously touch on some of the scores before, like the mind, your potential. But we can't really choose a book for you. It's like you have to look at the covers, look at the titles mm. and see what resonates with you or what your inner being is kind of calling you to. Yeah. So that's why the best thing is to come down and have a look through or go on the website and look through the books and see which one. But the latest books you. out uh, would be The Actual Facts, The Patarat, and the Master Secrets. Oh, that's a good point you've just made. So let's explain that. Mm. So we've got actual facts that give you the facts and you can go and research and check it out. Then we have the Master Secrets, which are things that no one on the planet is talking about, mm. that the Master the master's now teaching, because he told us many years ago, there's gonna come a time, because what happened is when he was taking us through the different schools, people were like, when we were like going through the Muslim school, Orthodox Sunni Muslims and other Muslims were saying, oh, you lot are fake, you're not real Muslims and all of that. And then when we came out of that school, they were like, oh, they're not Muslims anymore. We knew it, they weren't Muslims. We're like, you can't have it both ways. Mm. And then we went through the school of Judaism, Christianity, Egyptology, but all of that was taking us to a point where we were gonna get back our own culture. And that's why he said, there's gonna be a time when I'm gonna to move to a point where no one can follow me. You're not going to be able to like check some information I'm going to put out because mm. I'm an extraterrestrial from the planet Risk in the galaxy called Ilion. So now we're where we are, where we're in our culture, we have our own way called the Partaruk. This is all these ones here, yeah? They govern every aspect of our culture. Like, if you want to say marriage, what you do, what you don't do, what you eat, what you don't eat, how you pray, how you chant, how you relax, everything to do with our culture, you'll find in the Pataruk, which is the way, our way. What is the purpose of life? To discover your potential and be the best that you can be and rise to becoming a supreme being again, which is what you once were. Bring out the, the, the true you, the higher you. Yep. What's on the other side of Antarctica and how do you open your third eye? <laughs> that question sounds like they're related. <laughs> um, I don't know what's on the other side yeah. of Antarctica because I haven't been there. And unless you go there yourself, you're only going to be going by hearsay, right? So um, I guess I would have to say I don't know for that one. The, the third eye is opened by one miss... Um, getting rid of the misinformation because that's a spell that traps you within those books. Like, because you'll have people that they're trapped within those books. Like, they will say, if you're not Christian and you don't believe the Bible, you're going to hell. Then in Islam, they will say, if you're not a Muslim and you don't believe in the Quran, you're going to hell. Judaism, they will say the same thing. Everyone is saying, believe in my thing and my way or else you're doomed. But that traps you because you can't think outside of that. So you've got to, first of all, realise that you have to be able to break away from all the like restrictions that opens your mind up. Then you have to start studying about your inner being and diet, change the way you, you know you eat, the things you eat. Deal yeah, with man, yeah. like, like minded people, <coughs> people that are on that kind of like mentality thought as well. Yeah, start to mm. expound your mind, meditating, relaxation. Um, there's so many things. That's why I said our culture will be the way to help you raise your vibration. 
And remember this, when we talk about food, yeah, the pineal gland, this is what we're talking about when we say the third eye, because when you're dealing with, that's what helps you to open up. When it's closed, it's, it's calcified. And certain foods and certain things are done to close it, like fluoride. Mm. <clears throat> fluoride in the water and certain things you eat, it makes you more dense and not electric because signals are sent to the brain to process and it's all done through electricity. So when you start to become more of a light being, as in, you know, you're eating live foods and not dead flesh, you're practicing silence, meditation, you're actually looking at helping people, you know, you do things that are positive basically, that will help you to, and there's certain foods and things you can eat to enhance your your brain to, to help open it up. Ask them to break down where in the Orion star galaxy do the Negroid gene originate and how do they live? Where in the, all, all, we, all I can refer to is there's a there's an update that master teachers put out called um, the atomic that goes into that. Um, but exactly where, what you have to understand is in the Orion constellation, there are different planets. And so where the master comes from is the eighth planet, which is called Risk. And it has a trisolar system, meaning there are three suns and the way the planets orbit those suns, it's not like ours where we just go one rotation. It kind of goes like, like that because, and they have different seasons and different um, atmospheres. So that's what he has taught us about. Now on the planet itself, there are different continents there. Um, Cosmusta, Zarantu, and... Musta, Mustafa, Kar Mustafa or something. Uh, I've, it's escaped me, but there's three continents um, on the planet. And beings are allowed to only reside on particular continents. Um, but this is where the whole war with, as I mentioned before, in the heavens came in because Tarnush, who was a being, a reptilian being, where their sun was collapsing and they were seeking refuge somewhere else and they came to risk and they were allowed to stay on one of the continents. But in time, he wanted to take over the planet because now they've got a new home and then the war broke out and that's kind of how they were, do you know what I mean? ejected out um but yeah so to give you the exact place uh i can't give you that right now but yeah it's definitely um risk and ilion is part of the orion constellation and sirius as well where we come from what's the oldest creator they know of you see the word creation yeah it's a, another misconception because there's creation and there's existence mm -hmm. And there's a big difference because to create something, you're destroying something else. So a simple way of explaining that, to create a table, you're going to destroy a tree to get the wood to create the table. Existence is before creation. And existence goes trillions and trillions and trillions of years with different beings evolving in their different, you know, like, galaxies and so on. So it's hard to say the oldest creation unless you're talking about the oldest on the planet Earth. You see what I mean? Because we that's why I said about the life came here by way of the, the dolphins to germinate the water and then that comes out with our ancestors as the you know the eight Ogdawads who became the nine Indians who then evolved and then you had the Sans people in South Africa who came from the Patarites. So that's what I'm saying. That question is a bit vague in terms of how far back are you going and what are you calling creation? Because there was a humanoid life form on the planet, but they were still evolving from the waters, you see. So they'll have to be a little bit more specific in terms they can of... Check out this book as well, Existence, How and Why. Yeah. Yeah, that one goes into it. Yeah. And, and so, but they, simply answered, it will be Africa, the first... You know, like I said before, the first beings that evolved in Africa, Sakamta, the, the female will be, the, the, her name will be Sakamta if you want to give somebody one name. Or, yeah, or Pata, who's an opener, and then because they, they dual like male and female, we don't always just have one without the other. Yeah. Are the Najau, Neteru, and Anunnaki two different race of beings? Yes. 
they are. But they, they've all so mixed. So as I was saying that, um, like for example, Enki went to Africa and got wives and the, the beings in Africa are the descendants of the Nataru. And then you have the Anunnaki and the Anakim who are from the, Anun you know, the Anunnaki, but they, they mixed. So you have Enlil's taken wives, yeah. So yeah, they're two separate. And this is why people get confused because like in Sumeria, the most high would be Anu and in Egypt, it would be Ra mm. and we say Reye. And that's why Ra, you know, they, and then you'll have like Enlil and Enki in the Sumerian doctrine. And then you have Patar and Bes in the Egyptian. So they seem, it's, the, it's the, another way, like I said on the last video, it's like saying in the UK, you'll have prime ministers, but in America you have presidents. Even though they're different, they hold like the highest seat. And it's the same. So in, in Egypt, you'll have Ra, and then in Sumeria, you'll have Anu. Confirm that the male and female used to be one, one sex. Over time, the human body separated into male, female. Yeah, that's what we were saying about the females being first and being one. Um, and then you also had beings that had the double resonance or frequency, um, like the XYX and the YXY, which were the, the hermaphrodite and hemophrodite. When you hear the words hermaphrodite and hemophrodite, you're literally saying her morphing into a he. And the other way around is he morphing into a she. Yeah, so um, those, those beings are the ones with the double resonance frequency and these were the ones that were able to open like the stargates because again, they give you the movie Stargate, which is opening portals to travel between different dimensions and and you know different places dealing with only facts and not beliefs can they prove life in orion constellation since it's a huge part of their foundation well unless you've had the experience you can't really prove it um but we've been given ways of establishing how you decipher something being true or not true yeah and this is using evidence reason and experience and so anything that you come across, like how do you know it's true? Um, for us, we have a master teacher with, with us who we've sat with, spoken with, eaten with, and we know he's real. Touched him, um, which is better than any of the other options we're given. Like God that is meant to be in heaven, we've never seen him, never met him, never spoken to him. The same with Jesus, same with Muhammad. So, which one will you go for, the one that you've confirmed physically or the one you haven't? In addition to that, he has told us and given us so much detail about Orion and Risk and where he comes from. And he did it before it was discovered. Mm. Like the tri-solar system, when he was talking about the man from planet Risk and talking about the tri-solar system, people were like, you're crazy, there's no such place. Mm. But with years have gone by, they're now able to use telescopes, like I mentioned, the um, James Webb telescope, and they've now discovered tri-solar systems. Um, so yes, we, we can astral project and visit places in your dream state and confirm it, but that will only be confirmed to you because you've been there and you've seen it for yourself. But for someone else, it's just like, if I've seen a craft, extraterrestrial craft, as many people have, that's gonna be confirmed to me, but it's not gonna be confirmed to you. So unless you do your own research, check things out, um, we can't confirm for you, Orion, but it's in the Bible. Like we gave you quotes where it's mentioned. Job 9.9. Nine, yep, Job 9.9. Nine, nine, 38, 31. Amos 5, 8. Mm -hmm. There's so many quotes. That's, and Ilion is mentioned in the Quran. So if they're mentioned in your scriptures, then where did that come from? Yeah, so I hope that answers that. Do you want to add to that? Or no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we say, last thing, don't believe us. Check it out. Check yeah. it out for yourself. Mm. And don't accept anything that you can't prove for yourself. What do you guys think of law of attraction or vibration, etc.? What do you mean, what do we think of it? Um, does it yeah, law of attraction exists. This is why we say light minds um, come together, because it's called resonance frequency. 
if if you're in harmony, then that means you you agree, like the vibration agrees. Like if you go somewhere or into a situation and the energy is wrong and it doesn't vibrate with you, you're not going to like it. Mm. This is why even the, the meat and the food for the gods thing is like, if you don't like spicy food, yeah, you wouldn't eat hot, do you know what I mean, food. But someone who does, they're going to eat it. So these extraterrestrials, for you not to be on the menu, you got to clean yourself out so that you're not... Because when you're, when you're doing certain things, you're seasoning yourself to their like what they like. You know, like they like people who drink alcohol, for example. Yeah, so... But we're basically saying, like, yeah, energies, vibrations, attraction. If you know how to utilise, that's what I said before, the, the energy, you can manipulate it, you can attract things to you through your mental, through your thoughts. Is this a simulation? so that we can gain experiences in this earth realm, and when our assignment is over, we can return back home. Yeah, earth is a prison, as the master teacher put it. So we need to um, break, break this spell of sleep and get the hell out of this planet, man. What can we do to cleanse and awaken true spiritual self and power? Get, get into the knowledge, you know, Re realise that we've been lied to for like 6,000 years and like, Start delving into this information here. Check it out. Research. It's in your DNA as well. It's like if you get that spark, it's like sometimes you just change. Like your life, you just change. You'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna stop doing that, and you go on a different path. So, if you're feeling that calling, and you want to learn more, then yeah, start coming to our classes, read the books, get yourself like to know. Yeah, just, just learn, learn and then try and put it into practice. Out of the seven universe, which one was created first? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Um, what it is, is it's in actually, we have a, a tablet called the Holy Tablets, it's in there. But I know that I think ours is the, the inner, like if we were counting backwards, outwards, ours is the, the inner one on this side. But yeah, that's a good question that we may have to go and look into again. Bermuda Triangle info. Again, the Bermuda Triangle, we break down in, in, the, in the scroll, yeah? They call it like Devil's Triangle and all that because what it is, it's a vortex. Um, and what it is is that if you, to prove it, when ships that go over the Bermuda Triangle, if they're made up of wood, they do not sink or get, get taken. They don't disappear. Mm. But when they're metal, they get sucked in because it's a vortex that is pulling them and for those who don't know what a vortex is, it's a, like a portal or a porthole that can take you from one place to another dimension. And this is where Atlantis used to be. So people are like the lost city of Atlantis and Lumira and all of that because that was the area. And do you notice there were like, sometimes there was like a plane that disappeared not, not too long ago, a few years back, or there's certain planes and places that disappear. Um, that planes go to and they disappear is the same thing where they go through a vortex. Um, there's a lot more information to the Bermuda Triangle, but you know, we spoke about extraterrestrials that live in the caverns. Around the planet, there are different entrances and places where these beings come in and out, and the Bermuda Triangle is one of those, one of those places. And then we've got De Devil's Triangle as well, which is Japan, Philippines, and then Guam. That's where the devil's trying. Then you've got Bermuda Triangle, which is um, Bermuda, yeah. Florida. I forgot the other part as well. Yeah, you can see that. Just mm. Google that. Are there multi-dimensional versions of ourselves living in other dimensions at the same time? If yes, please explain. Yeah, that's what we've already explained. Like, there's nine levels of you, but at the moment, most people can only access the four lower ones, which is the physical, the spiritual the soul and the mental. But because you're accessing them all at once at the same time and you're connected to them, you you can like, like, like for example, we say the mind. The mind is the organ or the brain, but then the mind is not in your brain. You access that by pulling thoughts from the, the mental reservoir. And the, the soul, as we say, that's something that again, you, once you leave your physical body behind, you can travel and go to other dimensions and won't need your physical body anymore if you've mastered the physical. 
So as an etheric being, you can still travel. So yes, there are different dimensions. You're made up of the different um, beings who are all vibrating. And what keeps them separate is the different mutational rates of the different dimensions. Are Africans Americans came from Africa or they are indigenous to the land of America? Um, the thing is, the Americans, the word Americans come from the Amirs and the Incas. You see, this is what I was saying about how the mixture between, because you had like the Muslims with, I don't know if you know about Mansa Musa. Yeah, he was, he helped to navigate um, and help people travel using the currents to America. And the Amirs, um, that, that they were the ones that became the part of the word America and then the Incas, where, as I said, you had the Olmecs and uh, Chinese and all that, that also mixed with them to become, you know, what people call Native Americans today. So yeah, it's like even the word Atlantis, that comes from Utlan, yeah, Utla and Atla, which was to vacate, yeah. So words are put together based on what was happening or who was doing it, like a title. So America is the combination of the Amirs and the Incas. Where can I find them on YouTube? So um, we've actually just set up our new channel. Um, it's on Rumble at the moment. We are going to have a YouTube channel. Um, the links are going to be in the comments and, and you can just follow us. And yeah, we, we're new. It's a new channel, so we want to um, give away a few things as well. And from the last video, we've decided to kind of like put something together for the people that were asking us, you know, questions and we're like, okay, what can we do? So we put a course together um, and we've got a book that is gonna really give people that are new to this a fast track into like consciousness and spirituality or spirituality and consciousness. So um, for new subscribers, every time we hit like 20,000, we're gonna give a, a, a really good present, like something like, you know, like some of these kind of stuff, because we, we like to give really good presents. So this is like a VR latest, it's about 500 pounds worth, you know, so we're looking to um, give away gifts. Our course is also gonna help people um, learn a lot about what we teach. Um, it's online, so they can do it in their own time. Um, you know, just take it easy, ask us questions, you can interact with us and you know, make it you know, real. So you can always get, get in touch with us, yeah. How do you spell you guys' language? Okay, so the language itself is known by many names. Um, the way we pronounce it in our, language, in our tongue is Miss Batia, that's M-I-S-B-A-T-I-Y-A. Um, but people know it as Nuwapik as well, or Sabaik. Nuwapik is N-U-W-A-U-P-I-C. Sabaic is S-A-B-A-E-A-I-C. Symbolism both of these brothers is displaying, which tells me they are a part of a group. That's so vague and so broad. <laughs> like, it's hard to speak with by expressing yourself. So, yeah, the hand movements are just how we, you know, when you see people speak, they just express themselves. Um, we are part of, you know, the tribe, as we said, the Sabaean or Sabaic tribe, the United Sabaean nation, or the Nubian nation. Um, but yeah, the hand movements is just expression. Yeah, it's like relaxing posure, that's, that's all. You guys are... Yeah, it's like, should, we'll have to do that, <laughs> yeah. or be like that. And not, not, <laughs> so there's not, nothing more to it, um, yeah. It sounds like you all support Darwinism? Absolutely not. Um, see, Darwinism is a theory. They call it the, the theory of evolution, right? Um, we're not saying that it doesn't exist, but what it is is that it's a part of it. It's like there's existence and there's creation, and a lot of people mix the two up. So things existed and were evolving, and then the Darwin theory, it's a part of what happened during, as I explained on the last video, when the, um, when the planet exploded, and then things were kind of like evolving from that stage. But life existed way before the Big Bang. And as I said last time, it's like, what they don't talk about in that theory is that 
something had to cause the Big Bang. I know the Big Bang is slightly separate from the, um, you know, the, the evolution theory, but they're both theories. And a word theory doesn't mean that it actually happened. It's like, like I said before, scientists will use hypotheses and then they will try to actually prove whether that is so or not. Um, and, and it's still a theory. So what we're saying is that it's a part of it, but it's not the beginning of everything. Like, how, like his, his theory is like, we, we came from monkeys. How did the monkey get here? The monkey must have came from something. Mm. So uh, that's why we, last, week we was, uh, last time we were, say we were talking about protozoids, amoebas, single cell organisms and stuff like that. Right. Which is Darwin, he's, li he's, he's leaving now, he's not explaining the full story, so. And remember, I broke down about the DNA now with the Homo nelidae and Homo habilis, the Denisovan, the Homo florensis, Cro-Magnon. Now the Cro-Magnon, they were wiped out when um, the Basque people were created, yeah? So what it was is that extraterrestrials were, they wanted to wipe out the Cro-Magnon. And so they developed um, what you call, I guess, warfare dealing with, um, what do you call it? V virus? Yeah, viruses. Um, and that kind of got rid of the Cro-Magnon and then obviously the, the Neanderthal were left over. So. Yeah, it's um, it's it's not scientifically like proven now that things started in one place and just went along because with the Human Genome Project, they found out that there were three different streams, um, you know that, and then some people come from the monkeys and all of that, but not everybody comes from the same from the same root. Where can I buy the cultural grab, the one with the patch? <laughs> Do you want to address that? <laughs> what, with this one? Yeah, he's talking about your oh, one. Oh, <laughs> OK. Um, well, you can get cultural garms here in the store, um, but this particular one is you have to be a part of the like organisation um, and then there are different orders, as I explained the last time, and the brothers that are serious who want to actually get into some work um, they can they can get this. Do they have any social medias? I guess we can put the social medias on in the comments, but um, yeah, we, we do. Um, yeah, it's easier to put in the comments and then they can just click on that and follow us. Yeah. We also have, um, you know, PayPal, Cash App and all of that for those who want to support us because we really want to do this full time and generate a lot of content. Um, so if people want to support us and they want to see more content, We've just started our own channel on Rumble, um, which will be in the chat. And, you know, if you subscribe and follow us, you, you'd be up to date um, with everything we're doing. Where is the soul at? Where is the spirit at? And how does each one operate in us? OK, when you're dealing with, like, the soul and the spirit, the spirit would be the character, the character you. Now, the soul would be the emotional you, which is linked to the etheric you. Mm. But not everyone has a soul. Mm. Uh, what the good thing is, you see behind us, we have a lot of books that cover every subject that you're asking us a question about. There's a book that covers it. Um, in the scriptures, right, there are two souls and two spirits. So, for example, uh, in the Bible, they will say nafs or nafish for the spirit, and they will say ruah or ruak for the soul. Now, in our culture, you will also have something called the ba'a. The ba'a will be, the, will be a, a soul as well. And then you'll have the ka'a, which is the spirit, yeah? And the difference is that our ancestors who are on the ethereal plane or the higher planes, you're connecting to them by the ba'a and the ka'a. Whereas your ancestors, the physical ones, and on the planet when you're dealing with like we said before our tones FAC you connect with those through what people call the ruach and the nafs or the nafish what has a soul what has a soul that's a really good question so the soul is you know your pineal gland yeah it's the root of that right and then your um your solar plexus is where the root of the spirit is I mentioned in the last video that everything that is alive has a spirit because ultimately you're dealing with energy and vibration. 
So the soul will be like, for simplicity, like a battery, yeah? Uh, a rechargeable battery. And when that battery depletes completely, you can, by doing certain spiritual practices, recharge it. Like recharge your solar plexus, which is, as I said, the soul or the, um, the root of the spirit. And then that will, because you've got things called the chakras, yeah? Or people know as the chakras. And those seats are actually superimposed by glands. And so you can reactivate those glands to connect and take the energy from what they, they call the root chakra. And they say it's a kundalini on climbing um, Jacob's ladder by going like through the, um, the spinal column to get to your pineal gland. Um, and so once you're activated, you're then connected. But if your battery is completely depleted, sometimes you can't recharge it. So when we say people have lost their soul, it's because their battery or their soul has been completely depleted. And that's why in the Bible it talks about David lost his soul, but he was able to regain his soul by playing music. And, you know, he had to chant and play music like the harp to regain his soul. So it's the same way as saying today, people, if they get disconnected from their etheric parents and from the soul, i.e. they're no longer in tune with nature, then they will lose their soul. Um, and it's up to them if they want to keep going downwards in terms of you can fall by tapping into lower forces who feed off of that energy, the negative energy. So you have to raise your vibration. And this is why people get into like meditation, chanting, speaking our own language because the tones will reactivate you uh, and give you back your soul. So animals don't have souls. Um, plants and trees, they don't have souls. Um, the Nagaru or the Negroid race, we have soul. This is why they used to call us soul people because of the soul music that, you know, a lot of our artists used to, um, you know, provide during the day. Um, I don't know, do you want to add anything? Soul food. Soul food. Soul food. Yeah, so. <laughs> Soul ties into solar as well, the sun, um, because the energy from the sun is what keeps you alive. Um, and it ties with your inner soul, which is your inner sun, which is your solar plexus. How do you know the vibration equates to a spirit? How do you know the vibration equates to a spirit? Um, there's different vibrations at different resonance or frequencies. Everything is a vibration, really, but there are different levels of vibration. There's low vibrations and there's high vibrations. Um, when you say equates to a spirit, everything that is alive, that is breathing, um, breathing is really pulsating in and out. So the planet breathes because it also pulsates. Um, the, the plants, they take energy from the sun and that's how they receive what they call photosynthesis. We also take energy from the sun. Um, so as long as you're alive, you have a spirit. And that's the vibration. It's like green is also um, when you're in tune with nature. So if you see like grass, green, healthy stuff, it's always it's always green. Yeah, green represents the, he the healing force, but you didn't ask about green, did you? Yeah, yeah, this is a vibration of spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question still. Could you do a vid on the other senses? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, for those who are not familiar with the other senses, that's referring to intuition, telepathy, psychometry, and clairvoyance. So yes, we can definitely do a video on that. Um, and that ties into when you're tapping into your soul and the higher senses. Ask them where religion come from and how do we understand God? So you see, like, that question you've just asked, we've actually got a whole scroll called The Birth of Religion. Um, and like we said on the last video, religion is only 6,000 years old, you know? And um, yeah, and the, 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 the point about Amun um, watching the birth of God or the creation of God, that came up as well. The question is, how can God be created? But the birth of religion, that really goes back, as I was saying, to the, um, every religion that you can think of right now, if you look at, let's say, the youngest religion is Islam, 1400 years old. But there's nothing in Islam or the Quran that you can't find in the Old Testament, yeah? Um, 
if if somebody wants to say something, we can we can show them exactly where they get it from from the um, the previous um, scroll. Um, but they all go back to the Sumerian tablets because they all recognize Abraham as being the patriarch, the father of the religion, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. So Abraham himself came from Ur of Chaldea, and his father Terah, they was they 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 followed Zoroastrianism. So you can go back and see the birth of religion, which really comes from ancient Sumer which in ancient times it was referred to as Shina, yeah? So ancient Sumer, the Anunnaki came, and that's where religion comes from, um, and the many tablets of the Sumerian doctrine. So that's the birth of religion, and who brought it and gave it to Abraham, and then you have the monotheistic religions coming from, from Abraham. And then some of the concepts as well, stolen out of Egypt, like the Trinity, when they say, Father, Mother, Son, Holy Ghost, which is, isn't um, Trinity, it's actually equality, so it should be four. So you have Asau, the Father, Isaac, the Mum, Horus, the Son, and then Consul, the Holy Spirit. So you can see the concept is stolen mm -hmm. from ancient Egypt. So a lot of the concepts or the stories were stolen out of ancient Egypt. So you could just answer that simply by mm -hmm. saying, all world religions come out of Egypt. Yeah. If light brought chaos, what happens with the truth? What happens with the truth? So it, it, we're not equating the truth with darkness. Mm. <laughs> um, what it is is that there's different forms of light. This is another thing, yeah? Light, obviously, we know about photons, but like you'll have a blue light, you have a yellow light, you have a green light. There's different types of light and different vibrations with light. So there's light that is destructive. This is where... You know, you talk about the Illuminati, for example, where we were talking about, that's like the amber light. In, in um, the Quran, this is referred to as Narin Samun. When you get, when you're anger, you got like, you, you have that energy with you. Some people say they see red, you see what I mean? Because that's a destructive or a negative force. We're, what we're saying is that when, when the explosion took place and that light, came about because in the Bible, in the Quran, it says that God said, let there be light and there was light. What we're saying is that in darkness is tranquility. Till this day, when you want to go to sleep, everyone what, turns off the light. Mm. You want to be in peace, you will lock off the light. Lights are bright and they can blind you. And they're deceptive because they cast shadows and, and stuff. And if you gave a child if you had a baby on the floor and you put a shiny pound on the floor and you put 20 pound note on the floor, the child is gonna more crawl to the shiny light, mm. yeah? Because the cities, like if you look at cities, a lot of cities have a lot of lights because they promise you all of these, you know, fame and fortune and stuff. So light is chaos because once the light is switched on, you start to see, as I said in the last video, like different shapes, different sizes, different colors, discrimination comes in. So people that are light skin, they're favored over darker skin people. And when you go back to before God said, let there be light, he was in what we call supreme balance or dark energy or dark matter, you see. So um, we're not saying that light just, there is chaotic light, but there's also healing light, like the green light. You know, so that the damaging light or the light that blinds people, because some people will stare into the sun until they go blind. Or if someone, somebody was to shine light into you in your eye, after a while it can blind you. And religion is always telling people to come into the light. Mm -hmm. Like, come into the light. And when people are crossing over, they say they see a white light. This white light is the wormhole that will bring you right back here if you haven't made the grade or if you're not able to meet your ancestors to guide you through to the other side. So yeah, light can be chaotic, but at the same time, there's positive light, like the healing light as well. Please ask them about Cain and his offspring. Okay. Um, there's so much to it. Mm. What do they want to know? I mean, yeah. Cain, <laughs> as the Bible story goes, there were two people, Adam and Eve, and they had two children. Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel and then 
obviously he's afraid when he's found out um, that he gets banished out of the garden and he's afraid that people are going to kill him. And the question was, or should be, who are these people if at that time there's only mum and dad and him and his brother? Um, but the, the thing is that the Bible doesn't give you the full story because it actually goes back to the An Anunnaki stories of Enki and Enlil. This is the same story that becomes your Cain and Abel story, it becomes your Esau and Jacob story, and it's passed over, over and over and over throughout the ages. So Cain was actually a son of Nana, right? Um, and Nana's name, one of his other names, is known as Sin. This is why it says Sin stands at the door. So that that was a um, initiation. Cain and Abel were being put through an, an initiation and um, Abel offered vegetation, right? And Cain offered meat and the meat wasn't accepted because remember these extraterrestrials, as we've mentioned before, they like to eat human flesh. Just like humans like to eat chickens and you know, beef and all of that. They also, in the food chain, they prefer human meat. So you have the Anunnaki, but you have disagreeable Anunnaki and you have agreeable Anunnaki. The disagreeable ones is what is referred to as the Anakim. Um, and so they like to eat blood meat. And if you read the Bible right throughout, they're asking for offerings. You see um, blood, just, just Google or search the Bible for blood and you will see where they are asking for offerings, burnt offerings, um, blood is being sprinkled over altars and they like the smell of blood, the sweet saviour when um, the carcasses are burnt. So what we're basically saying is that because his offering was refused, Cain that is, he got all, like I said before, all angry and, and all he had to do is go back and try and make another offering and prepare a meal. But because his father's name is Sin, he basically got upset and then killed his brother. There's so much more to the story when we go into the cannibalism and um, why these beings like to eat, you know, flesh. Um, and we call that whole doctrine food for the gods. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything more to that. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the question should be why was Cain's um, offering rejected? Mm. That's, that's, that's the question. Did, they, did the God of the Bible like eating flesh? Because you've got human beings. I, I know that's going to sound crazy for some people, like God eating flesh and all that. But you've got human beings on the planet that, that eat human beings, you know what I mean? So it's not so far-fetched for extraterrestrials, because that's what we need to get explaining. These beings that you're calling God's ally, Jehovah's, Yahweh, Malaika angels, these are extraterrestrials. They didn't originate from here, so they came from outside there. And that actually ties into what people refer to the 200 fallen angels, right? Mm. Because if you read Revelation 12, 7, it says there was a war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels, mm. and they were cast down here to the planet Earth. When you look at the word dragon, it ties into Draco or the Draco constellation, where these draconian beings are coming from, right? So the question, going back to your original question, is that when he was banished and he said, people are going to kill me, God said, don't worry, I'm going to put a mark on you, right? And he put a mark on his face. The mark was actually the swastika. And he went out, where he went was called the land of Nod. Um, in the language, it's actually pronounced as Nud. But Nod is where these 200 fallen angels were residing. And when you nod, is to fall asleep because the, the the spell of Kingu, or it's called the spell of sleep, is where you had these disagreeable beings because they already were disagreeable. And this is why they were fighting with the dragon um, against Michael, Melchizedek, or Mikael, who in the Sumerian doctrine is known as Murduk or Murdoch. And, and that's why he had to go to the land of Nod because those people were already disagreeable beings and they were eating flesh and killing and murdering and doing all kinds of things. So that whole story about Cain and Abel, you know, there's a lot more, there's a lot more to it. But yeah, that's, that's kind of the gist of the story in terms of um, 
why Cain killed Abel, because he wasn't accepted into the order of Zodok. Because you have two orders. You had the order of um, Nana, and you had the order of Zodok. Zodok means Zedek, like I said, Melchizedek, but that's where the word Zodok, which means peace and justice, which deals with righteousness. And the other order, this is where it's like, you got to choose, do you serve, you can't serve two masters. Do you, sell, do you serve the devil or do you serve God? And Michael is the archangel of all the, the angels um, that they say is around the throne of, you know, of, of God. So we're in that same day and time now where you got to take a stand. Which side do you stand on? Do you stand on the side of the disagreeable? Because this world is actually crumbling, you know, and you see every day with all the things that are going on, you know, cost of living crisis, wars are going on, famine, you know, the viruses, and it's a new change that's coming, the transformation, and some people are not going to make it if they're not going to raise their vibration. So, yeah, you've got to choose. Do you stand with God or the devil? And this is what Cain and Abel were doing. It's like Cain obviously chose to go the disagreeable way because he ended up killing his brother. Um, which, which he didn't really have to do. Ask them to explain the separation of the firmament and water in Genesis. We, we kind of explained that last mm. time. Um, so, as I said, en Enki was the one, okay, he was hovering over the waters because it says that the planet was void and the darkness upon, you know, the earth. And the only thing that was available at that time was water. And it says the spirit of God was moving on the face. And if you think about the face, you have to look at shapes, right? If you look at a, like a square or a cube, um, you have the face would be the sides because you've got the sides. Sorry, the face would be the flat surface here. Yeah? So it's explaining that Enki was hovering over the waters while he was clearing the dust cloud and terraforming the earth to allow the sun rays again to come onto the planet. So that's what you're talking about. The firmament is dealing with clearing the dust cloud and the, the clouds um, because you have, you have water and then you had the clouds with the, um, with the dust. Because remember I said that when the hit, the, the planet was hit, I can go into that story a little bit. So the, the, the Nibiru craft, right? They were coming here to look for gold and they bumped into a planet known as Meldic. And, and when they veered off from that planet, they then hit Tamat, which was the planet Earth at that time. That's what one of the names of the planet. And they destroyed the planet. It actually split it in half. But because the planet was on an, on an orbit, it came back around again and hit it. So the planet, as we know it today was actually three and a half times the size that it is today. But because of that accident, because it was an accident, and the beings that were living in the waters were known as the Meldekians, a lot of them thought they were being attacked. So they started to try and, you know, go and attack Nibiru. But Nibiru had um, force fields that caught those planet, those ships. I say it's a very long story, but I'm trying to give you a, a synopsis <laughs> of it. So the beings were responsible for it. So they started to try and repair the planet and they used something called a tetrahedron science, mm. which is dealing with magnetism. So they put crafts. If you think about a pyramid, one craft there, one there, one there, and then using the, the um, science of magnetism, like Magnus, and hold the planet together so they can repair it and terraform it. And then what they had to do is import things back onto the planet. That's why a lot of people have allergies on the planet because they brought trees, they brought like... Um, marine life. Marine life, mm. bees, Insects. yeah, mm. wasps and certain things from their planets here to terraform the planet. So people will have allergies and like in the summer, some people have hair fever because some of the plants and the um, stuff that they brought here were not from here. You know, so um, what was the question again, the last part? Oh yeah, that's it, about the firmament. So I'm saying that that was the work that was being done to separate, because when the sun rays came back, 
they were melting the waters, which then gave up the, the steam or the vapour, which then became what people are calling the clouds. And if you see how cloud, clouds work today, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, been, it's been done through that terraforming. So we're actually in a biosphere now, right? So w within Earth, there are many different atmospheres. So you have, um, obviously, you've got the land, you've got the water, you've got the air, um, and then you have in, the different in, spheres. In, in space, space. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so um, there's, that's explaining how they separated the different atmospheres. Hope that answers the question. What's the one thing God can't do? We answered that last time, didn't we? Yeah. Become less than himself yeah. and still remain God. Yeah, God cannot become less than himself because, you know, in Christianity, they will tell you that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son and then people say he is God. It's like mm. he can't be God and be sent by God to come and die for your sins. And and then when he was, when it, when that hour was coming, he was praying, oh my God, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Then he gets killed. Then he goes back to himself and sits on his <laughs> right hand side of himself. It doesn't make sense. And the Lord's prayer says, our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So he separates himself. So he can't be God because to be less than yourself means you're not the greatest um, or the, the, you know, the, the most. You can't, you, yeah, you can't be God and be less than yourself. I mean, if you could kill God, you know how much havoc Satan would cause on a planet in this universe, if you could kill God. Like it's ridiculous, man. Yeah, um, that's the, yeah. Like, like that's another thing. Like, imagine if you were in your house, yeah, and there was trouble, you wouldn't go send your son to mm. go deal with the trouble. Like, <laughs> if you're a real God, you're gonna go to the door, innit? So to say he loved him so much, if he loved him so much, he should have come down, come down himself. That's that's, that's, that, that, that's why the man says you should roll. He's gonna win because yeah, as a as. So can say like if someone's breaking into your house, you ain't gonna send your children down there to go and deal it with actually shows situation. weakness. Yeah, you're gonna deal with it yourself, man. Like, why is he sending his only begotten son down? Why didn't he come himself, man? You know yeah. what I mean? Send and then that's why the Muslim in the Quran say you can't Allah can't have a son. Like, yeah. like, how do you have a son? <laughs> is it Ibn or Walid? Because Walid, they're yeah, two yeah. different words for son. And you can have an adopted son, but God can't have a son because yeah, I'll feel sorry for the woman that because I, can't, <laughs> I don't want to go there. But I'm just saying, like, it, it actually doesn't make any sense to say that God came down or sent his son. And in some places, he comes down himself, mm -mm. like walking to, in the to, garden. To get walking. props. Yeah. Only when there's props and, like, when, it, when, when man's giving him, yeah, props, like, are oh, you done good? That, that, yeah. yeah. And or when he's mashing up things, that's when he comes down. Yeah. And he's jealous as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How can you be jealous of your creation? You know, and it grieved him, like, mm -hmm. he was sad because he created um, man in it. Like, yeah, man. man was sinning and all that. But it's like, if you know everything, why did you make the mistake in the first place to create this being that's going to have evil? And then when evil's happening, you come and clean up and mm -hmm. then you kill everybody and everything that didn't have anything to do with it. I'm talking like in the flood the story. Flood, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? Adam and Eve did the crime. Mm. <laughs> And then he comes and kills everybody, the serpent, the, sli the snake, which is another funny one. This snake um, and, and Eve speaking to a snake in the garden where there, there's no snakes that can talk. No reptiles. Yeah, and <laughs> can you imagine as a woman, if you saw a big snake coming to talk to you, like reality, you're going to run. <laughs> no one's going to stand it. Again, let me, let me tell you what, it's a misinterpretation of... Um, the word doesn't say in the cat, it doesn't say snake, you know, it says um, the whisperer, yeah, because there was, it was somebody speaking to her, whispering, um, which is really going back to Ningizida, when I say stuff and like, lose people in it, but yeah. Um, yeah, there was somebody in the garden who was speaking and she understood what he was saying. And that language they were speaking, she to he told her that God is lying to you. Mm. And in that situation, because they said that if, if you eat the fruit, you're going to die that day. And um, he was like, nah, God is a liar. You can eat it. You're not going to die. 
and they ate it and they didn't die. So who was actually telling the truth? Um, and then yeah. Genesis, when you go into Genesis 3, 22, it says that, behold, man has become like one of us. This is meant to be God speaking. So who's the us he's, he's referring to? Mm. Now man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. What's he talking about? That whole story doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, think about this. I have to tell people this, right? So God put the tree in the garden. And then he put this being called a serpent. And he says he's the most cunning being on the planet at the time, yeah? And then he puts Adam and Eve in the garden, knowing that he created the garden, he created the tree, he created the serpent, and he knows that the serpent's the most cunning. And then he, the serpent comes along and cuns Eve to eat the fruit. And then he comes along and punishes everyone. But it's like, why did you put the tree in, in the garden in the first place? People will say to test them, to know. But it's like... If you already know everything, there's no point of a test. Because if I'm giving you a test and I already know what you're going to do, what the answer is going to be, that's not a test. Mm. So, you know, these are all the stories that they make up because they don't understand the true story of what's actually really happening. Yeah, um, I know. You're... That, that's like having a, a children's party for like, you know, three year olds. You have this big chocolate cake in the middle and he's in tell the children don't touch the chocolate cake but you can have everything else you know the children are going to trouble that cake mate you know what <laughs> I mean right, yeah. God is meant to be all knowing he knows yeah well, what's the point of putting the tree in the garden to test he already knows the end result so yeah. who's, he, who's he proving the point to to the yeah. angels then what like, I told you man I told you they were going to take it <laughs> what's all that about man I know that there's another story with the Job incident he made a bet with yeah. God to, he said um He's gonna he's gonna test man and prove that they're not worthy. Mm. And it's like, how can you bet with God? Like, it doesn't yeah, make yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. there's so many we can go from cover to cover, Bible, Quran, any of the religious books, and ultimately it comes down to these are uh, extraterrestrial mm. stories that have been passed down from generation to generation, mistranslated, and today people are confused and they're lost. That's what the word babble means, to confuse yeah, you. confusion. And um, that's why, obviously, in the story of, uh, you mentioned earlier on, Genesis 11, when their tongue was confused, they couldn't speak. They were babbling. And that's what the Bible mm. is today. It's just uh, people are babbling and just, like, not able to understand or understand what's actually really taking place or going on. Yeah. Just a small point there. Like when you ask people like the Christians like or Muslim, like where is God? Is God everywhere? They say yes. So he's in hell as well. They say no. So that means he can't be everywhere then. They choose where you know what I mean? Yeah. If it omnipotent, omnipotent, omnipresent means everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Every means everywhere means everywhere. So he should be in hell as well. <laughs> if he ain't in yeah. hell, he ain't everywhere. They so, pick and choose. Yeah. Like I don't know if I said this the last time, but like imagine yeah, two people are in a car. They've got a cross hanging on the mm. dashboard. They have an accident. One person survives and one person doesn't survive. People will say, thank God for the person that survived. <laughs> like, where was he? Mm. Why didn't he save both of them? Mm. Like, another thing, like you go to hospital, the doctor will operate on you, cure you, and then you say, thank God. But it was the doctor. But mm. people are going to say, it was, the doc it was God that gave the doctor the ability to cure the person. But if that was the case, why not prevent the whole accident and the illness and everything in the first mm. place? If God can get rid of all the problems in the world and they say he can, why doesn't he get rid of all the sin in the world and all the problems in the world? Because these are limiting lim gods with limitation. Um, mm. They just, you know what actually is interesting because we talk about God of the Bible and the God of the Quran, but we have to tell you what they're trying to really convey. In our language, uh, that's called the all. Or mm. all. Mm -hmm. pa, pa, ot. Pa, pa, ot. Yep. That's all existing. E everything is a part of the all. Because you can't take away from the all and you can't add to the all. And we are all part of the all at different vibrations and different levels. And you can come back again over and over again until you make the grade to go and become eventually one with Pa'ot or the all, you know? So the concept of 
God in the Bible and in the Quran, because it's extraterrestrials walking, talking, making mistakes, being jealous and doing all of these things, they, it's, they make God look bad because mm. as we keep asking all of these questions, um, no God in the sense of a being that is omnipotent, omnipresent, and knows everything will make mistakes. No, if you know everything, it's like, how do you make mistakes? Mm. We can't. Yeah, so. Well, he grieved, he, in Genesis, isn't it? He grieved man, grieved him in his heart that he created man. So, like, it, that means he didn't even know that man was going to end up the way they were going to end up, like, fall to the waist at all. He didn't yeah. know all that. So, he felt, he felt sorry in his heart. How so, can he have a heart? Yeah, that's another question. God's got a heart. You know what I mean? It's like crazy. So you could see this this concept of God came from man's imagination, his own idea. Like you know what I mean? Mm. They don't want to admit that. Yeah, these guys are extraterrestrials. Some are flesh eaters. Some didn't eat flesh. Some were agreeable. Some were disagreeable. Right, yeah. that's, that's, Go ahead, bro. That's, that's the main thing, man. Some came for holiday. Some came to for minerals. Some came to hunt. Some came for food. <laughs> mm. Some came for a vacation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's real. Also ask about the story of the Tower of Babel. <laughs> OK, yeah, that's again, um, that's in Genesis chapter 11, and it's talking about Nimrod. And a lot of people don't even know what the tower was. The tower, the tower was really an antenna or communication medium to, to communicate with the deities that were on Nibiru, right? So what it was is, Nimrod, Sargon, which is his, his new, his new, or Nimra, uh, Nimra, um, I can't remember his other name in, in our language, but mm. he's known as Sargon as well. So he was tired of the Anunnaki affecting the people by the frequencies that they were sending down from Nibiru. And so he went about building a tower so he can, he didn't want to speak to Enlil and um, Enki. He wanted to go directly and speak to Anu. So he went to Africa um, and his father's name's Kush, obviously. So he, he learned the language that we're calling Misbatia today, right? So he was taught that language. And when he came back, he was teaching the people that language. And this is how they were able to block the frequencies that were coming from Nibiru. And so they were able to now do magnificent things and build structures and do great works. When Enlil uh, uh, heard this, it was like, how come they're not following our instructions anymore? So he was like, we need to go down there. And that's where the Bible story in Genesis 11 talks about God went down to confound the languages so they, they couldn't recognize or communicate with each other anymore. Because when they were working together and speaking their own tongue and language, they were able to block off the frequencies. It's like today, um, we get a lot of frequencies being sent out, you know, the radio, the TV, the you know, iPads, the, the mobile phones, microwaves. microwaves, and you get distracted a lot. And the tones and vibration are not really conducive or good for us. So if you block that out, um, you won't be controlled because there are some people that are literally programmed by what they see on TV, what is put out there, you know, in the media. So yeah, you can block all that out. But yeah, the story of Babel was really, and the word Babel, ties into Bab El, which is a doorway to Ilion or mm. El. Oh. And it's also the word um, Babylon comes from that. Because, you know, there was old Babylon and there's, there's now new Babylon, which is really America. But um, old Babylon, which was that, that whole area of what you call Iraq or Sumeria today. Um, yeah. I think the story also tells you how we can accomplish something if we put our minds together as well. Yeah. What, we, what we, we could accomplish, because it shows you when the minds, when they, when when their minds were one, they could, could accomplish great things. Mm. Yeah, but there's a lot more to that mm. story still. Yeah. Explain that, please, brother. Light brought chaos. I need to understand. I have many questions. Okay. Um, light brought chaos. Did we, we did. Um, I'm trying to say. If you, okay, if I if I took dynamite, yeah, and I blew up this this building or blew, blew up something, that's chaos. Mm. 
Yeah, so what we're saying is we have a book called um, The God of, of Light and Fire because in the Bible, fire is used a lot and fire in the type of fire, which because back then you didn't have like street lamps and all of that. So every time they're talking about fire, they're talking about the fires destroying something. That's chaos, yeah? Obviously, I'm going back to the birth of light, as in when something exploded, yeah? I explained in the last video that the formation of the solar system comes from an explosion of a planet. And even before that explosion, when you look at the different forms of light, you will get back to a point where before God said, let there be light, or before there was light, there was darkness. In darkness, there's tranquility, there's no chaos, it's just peace and harmony. So that's where if you then explode or like um, blow up something, that's chaos, that's not something of peace and agreeable. You know, that's where we're saying like, before light was birthed, to, for light to be birthed, there was something that caused it to be birthed. And in the Big Bang Theory, they're telling you that the, um, the explosion came. But we're saying that explosion was just one explosion because there are many explosions that form, because now you've got people talk about the universe, but we, we explain that there are seven universes. And just like we have different um, galaxies, those galaxies, if you look into space, you're seeing light. And those galaxies came out of the explosions of this planet that I mentioned previously called Sal. So um, I don't really know how else he wants us to explain it, but it's like even in this room, if we turn off the light, if it was pitch black and nothing was moving, it would be just peace and still and tranquility. The minute you turn on the light, you see different shapes, mm. different things. Your mind is no longer at peace because you're seeing different colors. And sound and light work hand in hand because the bang created the sound and then the light comes out of that. But light can be transformed into um, to sound and sound can be transformed into light. To the point where if I use a very simple example, uh, Jimi Hendrix, a guitar player, yeah? He plays the guitar and he's making sound. But he was able to play the guitar to such a stage that the guitar caught fire and burn up and mash up because, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's, he was able to turn sound and convert it into light. I hope that helps the person asking the question. 